lahat. This hearing is now called to order. Halos apat na taon matapos ilunsad ang Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program o PUVMP, bubuksan natin muli ang issue paugnay ng nalalapit na palugit na ibinigay para sa consolidation ngayong katapusan ng Marso. Ilang ulit na tinalakay ito sa Senado at ang issue ito ngunit hindi matapos-tapos ang reklamo. This time around, this committee will get to the bottom of these important issues. Una, ilang ulit na rin ipinakiusap ng committee ito sa Department of Transportation na unahin na muna ang pagsasaayos ng mga ruta ng ayon sa sarili nitong department order. Tanggapin ang roadworthiness bilang standard sa pagmodmodersa momodernisa at pag-aralan muli ang buong polisiya ng phase-out. We have seen many deadlines come and go, but the basic issues that we discussed in the past remains unresolved. Ano ba ang sitwasyon ngayon? Ano ba ang nagawang aksyon? Pangalawa, kaugnay sa nalalapit na March 30 deadline, maraming driver, operator na hindi naniniwala hindi pa rin naniniwala sa konsolidasyon. Since most of the drivers and operators are new to the practice of organizing a cooperative, will they be provided with the relevant training and skills building workshops to ensure better outcomes for their newly formed organizations? Ano-ano ang mga maaaring itulong ng DOTR pagdating sa ganitong usapin? Pangatlo, Kung kumapit nga sila sa patalim at napilitang mag-consolidate para lang makapag-operate, ano naman ang aasahang tulong mula sa gobyerno para makabili ng modern units? Ayon mismo sa Department of Transportation, maaaring umabot sa 2.4 million ang halaga ng isang modern jeepney. Even if the government increased the subsidy to 160 thousand pesos per unit, the numbers simply do not add up. Hindi ito kayang bilhin ng ordinaryong, ordinaryong chuper. Ito marahil ang dahilan kung bakit naibibigay ngayon ang prangkisa sa mga nagsusulputang kooperatiba at korporasyon na hindi naman talaga nanggaling sa mga hanay ng mga chuper. Pangapat, Kung hindi talaga kaya mag-consolidate, ngunit roadworthy naman, makakabiyahe pa rin ba sila? Ano ang mangyayari sa kanila? May tulong ba silang matatanggap sa gobyerno? Kung meron man, sasapat ba ito upang makapagsimula silang muli ng bagong trabaho o kabuhayan? Nawalan ng kabuhayan ang karamihan ng mga PUV driver operators dahil sa pandemya. Ito mismo ang dahilan kung bakit sinisikap natin dito sa Senado na mabigyan sila ng agarang ayuda noong nakaraang taon sa ilalim ng Bayanihan 1 at pondo para sa subsidiya para makabiyahe ng ayon sa safety protocols sa ilalim ng Bayanihan 2 at 2021 budgets. In order to truly heal and recover as one, we need to lift unnecessary burdens caused by deadlines and requirements that could not possibly be met by hundreds of thousands of PUV operators. Data shows that there will be around 100,000 PUV drivers and operators who will be displaced as a result of the PUVMP. Isang daang libong pamilya ang magugutom sa ilalim ng programa sa gitna ng pandemya. Sino ang sasalon nito? Kaya ba sila, kaya ba sila kupkupin ng mga ko, kooperatiba at korporasyon na makakakuha ng mga rutang naging lifeline ng mga driver sa loob ng mahabang panahon? This hearing is also a gentle reminder that any form of phase-out of any PUV is prohibited under the Bayanihan to recover as one act. Bawal po ang pagpapatigil ng biyahe ng mga PUV sa ilalim ng kahit anong programa
kahit ano pa po ang tawag, PUVM man o konsolidasyon. Lagi kong sinasabi ito tuwing may driver ang pinag-uusapan. Gusto natin maging ligtas ang ating mga daan at pampublikong sasakyan, ngunit ika nga nila. There are two sides to every story and as policy makers, we are expected to consolidate both. While we push for safer roads, we should also put ourselves in the shoes of those who are asked to comply with the regulations we are implementing. Kaya ba ang mga kaya ba ng mga karaniwang super na sumusunod sa mga alituntunin ng programa? Kung noon pa lang ay umaangal na sila, ngayon pa kayang kasagsagan ng pandemya. Surely, there must be a way to modernize our public utility vehicles without throwing our drivers under the proverbial bus. It is under these circumstances that this hearing is called for. We want to hear all sides so that we can finally put to rest this issue and give some peace to, of mind to the PUB sector. Apat na taon na silang tinatakot, natatanggalan sila ng kabuhayan. Sabi nga ng mga super na humingi ng tulong sa komite, hindi sila sa COVID na mamatay. Kung hindi sa stress, dulot ng ganitong mga paibaybang polisya. On this note, I would like to offer a minute of silence to honor the leaders who relentlessly fought for the rights of the transport sector. Alalahanin po natin si Kazeli Maranan na marami beses nating nakasama at si Ka Efren De Luna. One minute of silence, please. Maraming salamat ka Zeni at ka Efren sa inyong walang sawang servisyo. Maraming salamat po. I would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of Senators Nancy Binay and Senator Joel Villanueva or at least they've indicated that they will be joining our hearing this morning. And for our secretariat, uh, please read the names of our resource persons and their designation. Go ahead, please, secretariat. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. For the public hearing of the Committee on Public Services on the a Just and Humane Public Utility Vehicles Modernization Act, we have the following resource persons online. Yusek Rainier Paul Ariebra, Under Secretary for Legal Affairs, Department of Transportation. We have Attorney Mark Stephen Pastor, Assistant Secretary for Road Transport and Infrastructure, Department of Transportation, together with Ms. Erica Magpayo, uh, Jarisa May Biscante, Joe Mir Pantawe, Joyce Rivera, and Vianne or Vian Baliente, and Ms. Joyce Rivera. Uh, sorry. And then we have Mr. Eugene Pabu Walan, Executive Director of the Transportation Cooperatives, DOTR. Attorney Martin Delgra, Chairman, Land Transportation, Franchising, and Regulatory Board, together with Mr. Joel Bolano, Mr. Zeb Usain, and Yanni Bermudez. Then Mr. Edgar, Alba, uh, Edgar Galvante, Assistant Secretary, Land Transportation Office. We have uh, the Governor Daniel R. Fernando of the Province of Bulacan. Mr. Melencio Boy Vargas, National President, Alliance Transport Operators and Drivers Association of the Philippines. Mr. Modesto Floranda of Piston. Mr. Danilo Yumol, Confederation of Drivers and Operators in Central Luzon. Mr. Robert Martin Pasang Mazda. Mr. Salty Ping Ai, Vice President, Stop and Go Coalition. Mr. Ernesto Cruz, President, National Confederation of Transport Workers Union. Mr. Ricardo Rebano, National President, FEDJODAP. Mr. Teddy Hervasio, President, Inland Haulers and Trackers Association. Mr. Alex Yage, Executive Director, Philippine Bus Operators Association of the Philippines. Ms. Juliet De Jesus, nagkakaisang lakas ng manggagawa and samahang transport operator, 
Operators ng Pilipinas with Mr. Jerry Danila. We have Mr. Rosalino Villaraza, Federation of Ayala Center Transport Terminal Incorporated. Rachel Yacent Bendanya, Secretary General, Move As One Coalition. And TOEX Serna, Move One Coalition. Uh, that's all for the meantime, Madam Chair. Thank you, Yusa Kuda. Um, I think I, I would like to remind our resource persons we'd like to get as much done in the shortest possible time. As you know, even the Senate now is pretty stretched. We're not even supposed to have this hearing today. And we thank our ComSec for making um, himself available even online. So as much as possible, let's finish this hearing uh, by noon, hopefully, kung um, kakayanin. Let, let, uh, may I begin with the uh, LTFRB? Um, ano na ba yung status ng ating, um, yung status ngayon ng PUVMP, LTFRB? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you also for uh, inviting us, no? not only LTFRB, but the OTR, so that we'll be able to give the latest update on the program implementation under the PUV modernization program. And perhaps to take note on the advice and guidance of the of Madam Chair, may we be allowed to share screen so that we'll be able to expedite the presentation of the updates that you have requested, Madam Chair, please. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd like to uh, have a short presentation on the updates box. Can you see the screen? Uh, we can see it, uh, Chair Delta. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> uh, before I start with the updates, uh, it might be good to put the context, uh, the, the program implementation as to the updates in context on what the key components are. And perhaps uh, it might be good again to, the context would start from even before we started this program, Madam Chair. Yung <clears throat> paglalakbay po natin dito sa, tungo, sa tunay na pagbabago, pag modernize na natin sa ating public transport, is would start with a single step. Attempts have been made in the past, as mentioned in the uh, covering uh, statement for this proposed bill, and we recognize those attempts, Madam Chair. We also would like to say, however, that uh, under this administration, this is the most serious attempt that we have made because we have gone as far as we can in so far as the program implementation is concerned. And we would like to show this to you in so far as the uh, numbers are concerned. Um, but to put that in context, the PUV modernization program is actually <clears throat> Uh, composed of several key components, but I would just like to talk about uh, very briefly uh, five or six components, uh, brushing through each one of them. The first one is the local public transport route plan. Alam nyo po yung pagpaplano ng rota dati, eh, nanggagaling lang doon sa maliit na opisina ng DOTC. But we know that transport planning is a local concern. In fact, it is a government, uh, it, it's public transport is a public need and for which government has to take a public and significant role in addressing this. And that's the reason why a key component here is the participation of our local government unit to plan their own local public transport needs. So ito po yung local public transport route plan. Pangalawa, yung route rationalization. Aside from... Uh, uh, planning locally the routes in each and every locality, meron din tayong uh, route rationalization sa mas malakihang uh, konteksto, kagaya ng nangyayari ngayon sa Metro Manila, kasi malaki talaga. Uh, we are talking about uh, 17 uh, jurisdictions of which the routes would cut across or cut through uh, several jurisdictions at any time. 
And that's the reason why uh, yung pagpaplano po nito, malakihan. Ongoing po yung pagpaplano nito uh, at uh, kinukuha na po natin yung report as they have committed to uh, submit the report on or before the end of the month. Meron din to po tayong malaking pagpaplano din sa mga rota doon sa tinatawag nating inter-provincial, inter-regional routes uh, in, the, in Visayas and in Mindanao. Tuloy-tuloy uh, doon po itong pagpaplano na ito and that we are expecting the report to be submitted uh, on or before the end of this uh, first half of the year. Pangatlo, and I think this is one uh, sensitive area that we can discuss later, yung fleet modernization. Alam po natin na uh, uh, yung <clears throat> this uh, component aims to provide national standard. No, no? Kung ano yung ligtas at komportable para sa ating mananakay at para sa ating chopper. Uh, we would just like to point out here that the whole the whole objective of this program is about having to give the commuters, millions of them, safe, comfortable, and dependable public transport, one of which is to modernize our fleet. Industry consolidation is also one key component, uh, merging operators into cooperative or other legal entity so that they can run modernized unit in a systematic and predictable manner. Uh, pang lima po, and which I think this should also be significant to discuss later, yung social support mechanism sa programa, ilalim nitong PUVMP. Uh, ang sinasabi po rito aims to assist drivers, operators who will be displaced or will opt out of the program through training or livelihood program. But I also would like to emphasize here, Madam Chair, that the social support mechanism also gives those who would want to uh, uh, retain their uh, livelihood under the industry. Ibig sabihin po, uh, mabibigyan din sila ng ayuda by way of additional competence in running a co-op perhaps uh, or in terms of uh, additional or raising the competency of, our, of their driving skills. So ito po yung mga components nitong social support. So where are we now in so far as the... <coughs> EUVMP is concerned. Uh, let's look at the fleet modernization. Ilan na po yung mga units na namo modernize? Uh, we just want to pick, there are actually uh, close to uh, nine or ten modes of public transport, uh, but we would just like to focus on these uh, four modes, uh, PUJ, UV, uh, minibus, and buses, mainly because they run on routes. So that malagay natin sa konteksto yung component on the uh, route rationalization at saka yung LPTRP na pinaplano uh, sa tulong na rin ng ating mga LGUs po. So uh, as of December 19, uh, yung units po, because this program started 2017 when the DO, uh, Department Order was issued, 1,421 units. Uh, <clears throat> however, if I may have to confess, Madam Chair, that notwithstanding the pandemic, to our surprise po, uh, tuloy-tuloy yung malakas na suporta sa programa dahil by December 2020, meron na pong mga 2,589 or an incremental increase of 1,168 units uh, even during the time of the pandemic or an increase of 82%. Uh, <clears throat> on, from December po until March 5, ito na po yung latest, from 2,589, naging close to 3,000 na po, or an increase of 340 units as of March 5. Again, an increase of 13%. Uh, anecdotal, uh, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, last week po, we had several POV launchings in uh, Caraga, Agusan del Sur, uh, Cagayan de Oro City in Region 10, uh, Cebu City, Amandawe in uh, Region 7, and here in Quezon City. So ang ibig kong sabihin, tuloy-tuloy po yung suporta dito sa programang ito. Alam po natin na mahirap ang pinagdaanan natin sa pandemya, and in fact, to our surprise, akala namin uh, either, either babagal pa, O kaya titigil. But we are we are very supportive to those who are very supportive of the program. 
uh, if I may at, say at this point in time. Where are we in so far as franchise consolidation? We just want to have a baseline data of uh, 2,000, uh, I mean 218,625 units, yung tinatawag nating DL, uh, DLTS, uh, Distribution of Land Transport Services, patungkol dito sa apat na modes of public transport as of December 2020. Uh, yung as of uh, March 5 po, 2021, um, we already have consolidated, in terms of units po, uh, 81,092 or an accomplishment rate of 35.92%. Uh, we just want to <clears throat> highlight the distinction between those DLTS po to the column under new and, new and developmental routes. Kasi yung DLTS po, ito yung mga existing units running on existing routes the new routes were actually open during the time of the program implementation. So as you can see, on the third to the last column, mataas po yung accomplishment rate dito sa franchise consolidation to about 64%. Uh, for existing franchise naman po, yung tinatawag nating DLTS, yung baseline po natin dito <coughs> is 218,625 and uh, they run on a total of 11,031 uh, routes. Uh, as of December 20 po, uh, they were already uh, consolidated franchise running on 1,049. However, there is a marked, in a significant increase by Ma March 5, 2021 to 2,085 or an incremental increase of close to 100% uh, in the last uh, less than three months. Po. And the number of consolidated transport services entities, I think uh, this is also something that we can discuss further because I know that this is, uh, this is also a component uh, of the program that is talked about, as mentioned earlier in the opening statement of Madam, Madam Chair. So as you can see po, <clears throat> we already have a total of close to 800 cooperatives running along 1,564 routes all over the country. And for the corporations that have participated in the program, 304 covering 543. Uh, yung po yung mga numbers of consolidated entities as of uh, March 5, 2021. Why is there need for consolidation? And if I may emphasize, Madam Chair, this is really the first component that we need to do uh, before we get into the other components like even uh, the financial component of borrowing from the bank, uh, getting new units. It's really the key here is consolidation. Why is that? Para uh, access to credit facility. No? Mapagbigyan tayo sa banko. Uh, kung iisang chuper pupunta sa banko, magihiram ng pera para kukuha ng isang unit, ay hindi po tayo pakinggan ng banko. Ang gusto po na makita ng banko is uh, may isang grupo, kagaya ng isang cooperative, na uutang para tatakbo doon sa isang rota. Ang ibig po sabihin nito, na yung financial viability po ng rota na yan, uh, ang kinikilala ng banko para tatakbo in a systematic and uh, a consolidated manner. Isang beneficyo po sa consolidation, eh, mas spread out po yung operating daily expenses natin sa pagpapatakbo ng public transport. At makita rin natin kasi organa organisado na po sila, mas episyente ang dispatching system. Ibig sabihin, the efficient use of our unit is... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, is assured because uh, we run on a consolidated uh, franchise. Uh, improve yung collection uh, kasi po, uh, and later, uh, lesser risk. There is access to common garage and depot. So, ibig sabihin po, uh, hindi na po uh, masyadong problema doon sa mga individual uh, operators uh, because they will now form into co-ops. Meron ding dividendo at membership benefit dahil cooperative po sila. And uh, most importantly, lalong-lalo na sa mga chuper, fixed salary na po sila at may benefit. Aside from that, 
because they are on fixed salary, uh, we would be doing away from <clears throat> the so-called oppressive uh, boundary system. Kasi talaga, yan talaga yung dagok ditong uh, existing fragmented transport industry natin, Madam Chair. And we need to fix that in a, in a, uh, in a very significant fundamental way. Uh, I mentioned about local public transport route plan, and I think we need to emphasize the fact na malaki po yung papel ng ating mga local government units sa pagpaplano ng kanilang mga rota. As we all know, <clears throat> uh, local public transport needs are local needs in their locality. But the parameters by which they are to plan are basically nationally national government guided. Kaya nga meron tayong uh, DOTR na naglalaan ng tinatawag na national standard and guidelines on how to plan routes in their respective jurisdiction. So a breakdown of this, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, we have a total of 1,575 uh, LGUs all across the country. Ang na-train na po ng LTFRB at DOTR, kasama na po yung consultant na tumutulong sa pagtitrain ng mga LGUs po all across the country, is a total of 1,379. Uh, uh, and the total submission out of those trains is 613. Another breakdown po dito is uh, just to appreciate yung mga types of LGUs who have attended and were given were given capacity building workshops so that they'd be able to train themselves and uh, and plan their own local public transport route plan. So ito po, uh, municipalities, cities, uh, LGUs, at saka, uh, I mean, uh, highly urbanized and independent component cities and provinces. So as you can see, 87.44% uh, out of the 1,575 LGUs have already been trained, and of which uh, 611 LGUs have submitted their LPTRP. Uh, yung submission ng LPTRP would be subject to revisions, amendments, consultation para mapagtibay pa yung mga plano na isubmit, na isubmit po nila sa DOTR at saka sa LTFRB. So that uh, tulong na rin sa kanila pagdating ng panahon, maiplano nila ng gusto kung papaano na paplanuhin yung tinatawag na interconnectivity of routes, pagkikilala kung saan dadaan yung mga mga mananakay sa kanilang mga lugar. no? Uh, because they have all the data there. For example, local population, the LGU would know. Uh, comprehensive land use plan, they would also know. So all those data are available locally. And that will come in good news when they plan. Uh, we mentioned about those affected. <coughs> Uh, Madam Chair, uh, there is a social support component nitong PUVMP. Uh, kaakibat po natin dito yung TESDA. So that sila po yung magbibigay ng mga training. Pero ang, <coughs> yung galing po, nung, ang budget galing po sa DOTR. And uh, based on our consultation with TESDA, meron pong 20,909 approved slots. Meron na po nag-enroll na 17,000. At meron na pong nag-graduate na 10,147. This is the, the, uh, the program that is ongoing on a budget that was, uh, that was, uh, that started last year. Ibig sabihin po yung budget nito was last year. And if you would see at the, at the footnote, meron pong additional uh, budget at sa tulong na rin ng Kongreso, ng Senado at ng House of Representatives na tuloy-tuloy yung uh, pagtutulong natin sa mga doon sa mga chopper at mga operator na maapektuhan ng uh, uh, whether positively or adversely dito sa programang ito. Uh, part of this uh, social support, actually, when they enroll, they are given what we call uh, daily allowance katumbas doon sa mawawala sa kanila pag uh, bu babiyahe po sila. So, ibig sabihin, binabayaran yung tinatawag nating lost time doon sa mag-participate sa programang ito. Uh, ito po yung mga very quickly lang, Madam Chair, uh, related uh, POV issuances. 
meron po tayong na-issue na mod, uh, yung LTFRB po, yung modern, uh, Memorandum Secular uh, on Simplified Process of Application. Meron din po tayong uh, na, na issue na MC 2020-084, uh, Extension of Time to File Application for Consolidation. Uh, itong two, uh, MC 2020-044, which is actually an incentive to those who would consol consolidate. Kasi yung prangkisa po natin uh, is actually good for five years, but when they do come into the program, their franchise is extended up to seven years. No? Uh, this is also in line with the uh, uh, financial package given by the government financial institutions kung saan binigyan din sila mas mahabang panahon na makakabayad. Instead of the usual three to five years, uh, binigyan po ng DDP at Land Bank na hanggang pitong taon para makakabayad sa utang. So, Malawag po yung programa pagdating sa financial. Uh, meron din po dito yung uh, implementing guidelines patungkol sa mod, uh, consolidation po. What are we saying here, uh, Madam Chair, if I may? At the end of the day, we all know that there are problems. We all know that uh, the program is uh, comprehensive enough to say that uh, there would be people who will be affected. More so now, during the time of the pandemic. But we would just like to say also, as in consultation with our stakeholders, lalong-lalo na sa mga chopper at mga driver, na uh, sana itutuloy natin itong programa ito. We might walk slowly, we might walk a little bit faster, depending on how problems might come our way. But we are confident, Madam Chair, if I may, that given the bill that you have presented before the body, that indeed you are one with us to continue with the modernization program. And that is what we want to say, that we are in support of the bill because essentially it is to continue with the program. It might talk about one or two components of the program, but at least it's an affirmation that the things that we have done in the last two, three, four years is, will not come to naught, but will continue so that we'll be able someday to modernize all the public utility vehicle that we desire will be modernized and transform ourselves. No? Sa tulong natin lahat po, hindi po kaya ng LTFRB, hindi po, po kaya ng uh, DOTR. Sa tulong natin na lahat na nandito ngayon, lalong-lalo na sa ating mga chopper, operator, cooperatives, no? uh, sa banko, lahat po tayo dito. Hindi po ito whole of government approach, whole of nation approach po tayo dito, Madam Chair. Yun na muna. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comprehensive presentation, Chairman Delgra. Um, my takeaway from the whole presentation is that there's a marked improvement of uh, those that are willing to join. On the other hand, there's still a lot of other drivers that we need to absorb and encourage to join if ever but we would like to hear also from their side mabuti rin meron pala kayong test the program na ipinaalala ninyo na nagbibigay pa rin sa kanila ng allowances uh, habang sila ay uh, nagpa-participate sa continuing education ngayon for reasons of fairness and balance I'd also like to hear from Mr. Yumul ano naman po ang um, uh, well, before we go to Mr. Yumul, uh, I, I see the hand of uh, Alex Yage. Sir, ano, ano pong gusto ninyong idagdag in Actually, connection with the presentation? Um, uh, magandang umaga ng chair, magandang umaga sa lahat ng mga nasa, nasa hearing ngayon. Uh, maganda po yung paliwanag ni Chairman Delgra at... Uh, Uh, at least ngayon ko lang po naiintindihan kung ano yung uh, liwanag ni Chairman, kung an ano yung programa ng PBUMP. Sapagkat po, uh, pat na taon po na, na since naumpisahan po yung programa, hindi po tayo nag public consultation at uh, uh, public hearing doon sa mga apektadong operator at apektadong mga stakeholders. 
Ang uh, nakikita po namin, Madam Chair, ay uh, kung nagkaroon po sana ng malawakang probre- na, uh, consultation at pub- pub- public hearing dito sa mga issues ng uh, PBUMP, ay sana po ay nakaisip tayo ng uh, magandang consensus na para hindi po mahirapan yung ating mga driver, hindi mahirapan din yung mga operator. Kasi sa ngayon po, dahil sa, pan- sa pandemic, ang mga operator, mga provincial bus operator po, one year na po, ang majority po, hindi nakakatakbo. Nagkaroon na po kami ng uh, uh, loan uh, moratorium sa aming mga financing uh, and banking institutions. At kung ipagpapatuloy po natin, yung PIB sa ngayon po, na hindi wala ho kami uh, kinikita, paano ho kami makakapasok, makakalapit sa ating mga bangko na bigyan po kami ng uh, panibagong uh, utang para makabili ng bus. Hindi nga ho namin mabayaran yung mga empleyado namin. Paano pa kaya kung bumili pa ng bagong bus? Kaya po ang, uh, ang position po namin, Madam Chair, ay uh, isuspindi po natin muna ang uh, PBUMP na Maganda yun na banggit ni Chairman Delgra. Lahat po dapat ng mga points na binanggit ni Chairman, Chairman Delgra, kailangan po ipaliwanag po niya sa lahat ng stakeholders, lahat po sa ating mga kagalang-galang mga senador at mga kagalang-galang na mga congressmen para makahanap po tayo ng consensus para lahat po tayo ay tama po, tama po si Chairman. Makausad po tayo kahit na po may, mayroong pandemya ngayon. Salamat po. Thank you po, uh, Mr. Yage. Uh, ma- gusto ko naman marinig si Mr. Yumul uh, sa kanyang feedback. Uh, magandang umaga po, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, and sa lahat po ng mga mambabatas natin ngayon, yung TRLJ Parby, lahat po nang nandito ngayon, uh, alam ko po, uh, kaya na-invite nyo yung mga yan as a resource person. Eh, makakatulong po sa usapin. Ano po? Gusto ko lang kung balikan itong presentation ni Chairman Degra. Ano po? Kung titignan natin sa datos, napakagandang pakinggan. Lalo na po yung sinasabi niyang limang component ng PUBNP na kung saan yung kauna-unaan, yung local public transport route plan. Isa pong ebidensya na ka, uh, kasama po sa resource person ngayon ng Ama ng lalawigan ng Bulacan, kung saan eh, nasalanta sila ng gusto ang San Jose del Monte, nagugulat na lang yung LGU kung bakit dinuplicate po ang rota ng mga traditional jeep. Ibig sabihin po, wala pong ginawang pag-aaral ang LGU, yung pong tinatawag nilang local public transport route plan. Eh ang nangyari po eh, kaya hindi nakakabiyay yung mga traditional jeep. Bagong rota, bagong operator, modernized jeep ang ginagamit. So, doon lang po, yung tinutungtungan nyo pong batas na sinasabi nyo, nilalabag nyo na po yung Department Order 2017-2011. Ano po? At lahat po ng tumangkilik ng programa na yan, puntaan, ta, puntaan po natin isa-isa, Madam Chair, o kunan natin ng konsensus. Bawat isa po umiiyak ngayon, mayroon nga pong grupo sa Pampanga, iiwanan na po yung labing limang unit sa STFR Direction dahil hindi na po nila kayang hulugan. Ano po? At yung sinasabi niyo yung programa sa TESDA, ay napagandang pakinggan po. Puro po yata kayo graduate, pasensya na po sa world. Ano po? Puro drawing po yung na- nakita namin kasi kahit isa sa amin, even yung programa ng, ng contract service at, uh, sa individual operator, wala po kami na bail. Ano po? Ngayon, napakaganda po yung sinasabi ninyo na yung mga datos na yan, nag-comply na. Napakadali pong mag-consolidate, Madam Chair. Kahit ako, yung mga miyembro ko, nationwide, bukas na bukas, o ngayon din, pwede po sabihin mag-consolidate kami. Pero yung pag-avail po ng mga modernized jeep, alam nyo po kung magkano. Yung class 1, may git 1 million. Yung class 2, may git 2 million. Yung class 3, may git 3 million. More or less po, kailangan namin magulog ng 40,000 naman. Eh ang kasada po namin sa mga traditional, almost break-even lang. Makapag-uwi ka ng tatlong daan, napanaran, salamat. 
eh, lalo na po kung may hulog ang kakailangan mong mag-ipon o magtabi ng 1,500 a day para doon sa hulugan mo. At sinasabi niya rin po kanina, hindi ka naman ika pa uutangin kung mag-isa ka lang pumunta ka sa bako, dapat grupo ka. Ewan nyo naman po kami masyadong maliitin kasi meron po kami operator na isang operator, 40 o 50 units ang sasakyan niya. Kaya niyang bumili. Ito, misa ko nang sinabi sa direktor niya sa region to ito. What if ako may kakayaang bumili? Bakit kailangan mo magpa-interest ng pitong taon na milyon-milyon? Magse-seminar po kami sa ko. May pondo po yung yung CDA, may pondo po yung OTC. Sa seminar pa lang, sinisingil kami. Sa pagkukonsolidate pa lang, kailangan mong gumasok ng from 11,000 to 20,000 dahil sa slashing o change of ownership. Bakit kailangan po yung investment namin, katulad ko po bilang OFW? Kaya po ako nagkaroon ng jeep ito po yung sasakyan ko. Kaya po ako nagkaroon ng jeep dahil sa pag-OFW ko. Investment ko po yun. Hindi po uh, magkaroon ako ng prangkisa nung wala akong pag-aaring sasakyan. Ngayon, tatakutin nyo kami. Ito po, Madam Chair, magmula po nung anak ang Department of 2017 noong June 19. Sabi ni Chairman Degra, base po sa programa nila, sa loob ng tatlong taon, fully implemented na yan. Hanggang June 30 na lang kayo. Pagdating po ng July 1, in-extend po nila July 1 to December 31. Pagdating ng December 31, in-extend na naman nila hanggang March 31. Wala na po silang ginawa sa amin. Mas kinatatakutan pa po ang LTA PARB sa ngayon kaysa sa pandemya. Bakit po? Punta ka sa LTA PARB, makikita mo yung mga signboard noon. Pag hindi kayo nag-consultate, mawawala na kayo. Yung mga employee nila, sino po ang tinatanggap? Tignan po natin lahat ng mga nakapag-avail ng modernization program kung old operator. Kaya napakaganda po nung Senate Resolution 867, yung just and humane. First presence, first usage. Nakita po yun naman. Pero sa kanila, lahat po lang inaprobar nila, Madam Chair, hindi po existing operator yan. Puro mang kapitalist ang bago, katulad po ni Brian po yun, o na solusyon. O katulad po ni nung iba-ibang mga korporasyon, nakita natin doon sa mga datos na ibig ko pong sabihin, nasaan po yung programa para sa aming maliit na nag-develop ng rota na kung tutusin since after World War II, kami na po ang nag-develop niyan. Inako po ba ng Peter, no? Mr. Yumol, may tanong po ako sa inyo. Kayo, kayo meron kayong sarili ninyong samahan, di ba? Uh, may grupo Opo. ka? Okay. Nakakuha Opo. ka na ba ng uh, prangkisa sa kanila dito sa bagong programa nila, nabigyan kayo? Actually po, ine-extend lang po kami. From five years na validity na CPC kayo po, ginawang uh, may three months, may one year, may one month, yung po yung tinatawag nilang provisional authority. So ano daw, ano, daw ang, ano daw ang kulang sa inyo? Bakit hindi kayo mabigyan ng mas mahabang prangkisa? Dahil po, hindi daw kami compliance doon sa consultation. Pinaliwanag ko na po, kaya hindi po kami pumapayag sa consolidation kasi po mawawala yung pinaghirapan namin. Yung maliit na operator na nakapangalan sa kanya, yung pangalan kong Danilo Yumul, mawawala na po sa amin yung pangalan ng prangkisa. Mapupunta na po doon sa korporasyon o kooperatibang ikatatag ninyo. Kaya po ayaw namin mag-consolidate. Dahil, kail, bakit, kail, ang tanong ko po, bakit kailangan inabutan na lang kami kung gusto nilang maging modernize ang mga sasakyan for the safe of commuting public para doon sa safety at saka convenience, bakit kailangan tanggalan mo kami ng prangkisa? Dahil alam mo, sooner or later, katulad ng nangyayari ngayon, marami nang nabata o na, na kinuha ng mga pinansya na hindi naulugan, alam mo, mapapangalan sa kapitalista yun, Madam Chair. Eh, hindi ka ba pwedeng, uh, hindi ka ba pwedeng gumawa ng sarili mong kompanya at isama mo yung grupo na yun. Um, sorry, uh, Chairman Delgrap, if for example, Mr. Yumol approaches you and he himself would like to consolidate and have his own company with, with all his members, pwede po ba yun? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Because that oh, is really the, the essence of modernization. Thank you for clarifying that for us. Pwede po yan. Th that is really the essence of modernization po. Pero ganito, 
tatanggapin niyo ba sila? Halimbawa, dun sa hanay ni Mr. Yumul, hindi naman lahat modernized na yung jeep. Kasi nga, di ba sinasabi niya, 40,000 per month, maaring ang amortization. Eh di ba sabi niyo Chair, na ang bangko, mas madaling magpapautang kung meron kang kooperatiba. Di ba? So, ibig sabihin, pag nag-apply sila para makakuha ng prangkisa sa inyo to form their own company or cooperative, there may be some members that have yet to obtain a loan. So meaning, hindi pa sila lahat modernized, but roadworthy. Papayag ba kayo doon? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd just like to put that in its proper context. Unang-una, yung sinabi po natin kanina, key to the modernization, yung pagko-consolidate, kasi watak-watak po yung prangkisa rito. We're talking about, on our database, 1.3 units per franchise. That is not an efficient, dependable way of running public transport services. Just to drive home the point on why we need consolidation. No, I, I understand. That, uh, yes. Moving forward po, yung sinasabi niyo pong unit, wala po tayong sinasabi na kung mag-consolidate kayo, may mga bagong units kayo. Mag-consolidate lang po muna kayo. Yun lang po. Uh, uh, yung... Uh, Si uh, Ka Obet uh, yuma, uh, is actually nodding that because he understands fully the modernization program. Ibig sabihin po, pag mag-consolidate na po, Madam Chair, doon pa lang po tayo gagawa pa ng mga susunod na hakbang. For example, ilang units ang kailangan natin doon sa rota na inaplayan natin. Ibig sabihin, kung, kung sabihin natin 15, then we go to the bank and the bank will analyze it not on a per unit uh, cost, but rather having to determine the financial viability of that route. Kasi ang, sa kabuuan natin titingnan kung kikita ba sila o hindi. Tama naman yung sinabi ni Yumol, ayaw niya ng modernization, gusto niya manatili yung mga individual franchises. Pero mayroon silang samahan. Ang ibig ko sabihin po, nakikita po natin yung katatagan at yung significance ng pagsasama, yung essence ng consolidation. And that's the way the bank would look at it as well. In so far as regulation is concerned, in so far as having to route is concerned, ganun din ang pagtingin natin dito. We are not going, go, we are not going back to the 1.3 unit per franchise that runs on a route with, say for example, 100 unit on a route. Talagang watak-watak yan, Madam Chair. That's okay, um, Chairman... Chair, Apo. so ibig sabihin so, kasi nabanggit niya, nabanggit ni Mr. Yumol, mga kapitalista. So kung ayaw niya naman sumanib doon, pwede naman gumawa ng sarili nila, di ba? Yes po, absolutely. Okay. So long Maybe, as consolidated po sila. Yun naman din pero, po talaga ang gusto natin. Pero siguro, ang concern ni Mr. Yumol, uh, nauna na sila sa mga ibang ruta. Ngayon, may papasok na, may pumasok na mga kumpanya. Baka naman yung ruta na kanilang tinakbuhan ng ilang taon, yun, yun ang mawala sa kanila. Tama ba yon Mr. Yumul? Opo, ang hindi lang baka, Madam Chief, check nyo yung record, Mr. Degra, sa Region 3. Meron kayong inaproban na rota, ang daw mabalakat to be expressed. Compliance sila sa PUBMP, nag-consolidate sila, ginawa nila lahat ng gusto nyo, pero nag-intertrain po kayo ng mga kakompetensyon nila, duplicating the route. nag po kami, Noong March 23, yan po ba yung sinasabi nyo may sure benefits at saka incentive? Eh kayo mismo, binibigyan nyo kami ng problema. Sabi nga ng isang kongresista, na pa, situate na parang makabayad kami ng utang. Yan sa kukunin namin bagong jeep, solo namin yung rota. Walang kakompetensya kung may bus, walang jeep, may jeep, walang tricycle. Pero kayo mismo, okay. tumatanggap kayo ng mga new applicant dahil yung mga tao nyo, alam nyo nakikita sila. May yung corruption po na yan. Sa makakakita ng tumanggap sila ng bagong rota, may, may tumatakbong rota ang compliance naman sa PUBNP. Bakit po? Opo. Dahil naglalagay sila sa LTE Parody. Mr. Yumol, Mr. Yumol, actually, yung aming consultant, sinabi, tama ka, na yung LTFRB nagbibigay ng mga prangkisa doon sa mga bagong mga corporate types. Um, Naintindihan ko, Chairman Delgra, kasi mas organized itong mga kumpanya na ito no? uh, sa mga legalese at saka sa mga business uh, requirements and practices. Pero may effort ba ang LTFRB na ginawa na o oh, 
Mr. Yumol, malaki ang samahan ninyo. Sumama muna kayo. Kayo muna ang bibigyan namin ng prioridad kasi ruta na ninyo yan dati pa. But organize yourselves. Meron ba kayong ginawang ganun? Ay, ka, ang ganda po nun, Madam Chair. Ano po, kami mismo, pinipresinta na namin yung grupo namin. Pero bali wala po, nagtetengang kawali po yung LJ Party, nagbubulag-bulagan. Bakit? Kami po mga traditional o, o dating operator, hindi na kami pinapansin. Ang pinapansin nila kung saan sila kikita yung mga bagong operator. Bakit po? Sa contract uh, services lang, walang pinatatawag sa amin. Sa SAP, wala silang pinatatawag sa amin. Ang inuuna kaagad, itong mga nag-comply ng modernization. Nawawala na po kami sa eksena. Parang hindi si na ano, kami... Mr. Yumol, gusto ko naman marinig si, ano, si Mr. Martin ng Pasang Mazda. Tapos uh, Madam Chairperson? Uh, ah, Senator Nancy, go yes. ahead. Do you, you have a question? Yes, Na Madam, Ch Madam Chairperson. Hindi, gusto ko lang sana itanong sa LTFRB. In fact, I've been asking for this uh, date of uh, Yung plano, bago ba natin sinimulan itong modernization, may plano ba tayong ginawa or may mapping ba na ginawa yung LTFRB kung saan nakalagay doon yung what is existing and then what is, ano ba yung future plans dun sa mga ruta na yon? Meron po bang ganun? Uh, Madam Chair, if I... Kasi, Parang, Madam Chairperson, doon lalabas yung, ano eh, yung pag i natin kung sino na yung mga existing na operators na umiikot doon sa ruta na yon at kung may kakulangan ba or okay. may, may, may opening ba for another group to, to enter that route. Meron mo Actually, ba tayong ganun, mapping? Uh, thank you, Senator Nancy, for bringing that up. I'd like to acknowledge the presence also of Senator Joel Villanueva for taking time out this morning. I know he was also... Uh, having to help his uh, uh, <laughs> daughter with his homework. Thank you. Talagang Thank mahali you, Madam Senator, Chair. Mahal ni Senator Joel ang ating mga drivers, ano, kasi naawa rin siya being the chair of the Committee on Labor uh, tsaka si Senator Nancy rin. Um, pero bago Thank yan you. sagutin, bago sagutin yan, uh, Chair Nancy, yun nga yung matagal na namin hinihingi din yung, yung route rationalization dun sa LTFRB. Medyo matagal na rin hindi namin nakuha. So, Maybe, uh, Chair Delgra, please address the question of Senator Nancy. And then later on, I want to hear also from the other organizations and their experience. Go ahead, uh, Chair, Chair Delgra. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much for the question, Senator Nancy Binay. And uh, nagpapasalamat ako kasi uh, magandang katanungan po yan. Unang-una, pag mayroon po tayong programa, uh, especially of this magnitude. At tumatakbo na. We mentioned about the jeep that has been running since after World War II. Ang ibig sabihin po natin dito, meron po tayong datos. It's not like planning in, planning in a vacuum na zero. We start from zero. No, we don't start from zero. We start from something that is there already. Uh, actually, during our presentation, we presented the data that more or less we have something like uh, yung tinatawag nating distribution of different modes po, umaabot ng, uh, we only identified four modes uh, kanina, uh, PUJ, UV, minibus, at saka mga buses, because these are modes of public transport that run on route. So mayroon po tayong datos, inventory, na 218,000 units all across the country. Now, having said that, doon tayo magsisimula sa pagpaplano. Aside from the units po, Titignan din natin yung mga number of routes kung saan tumatakbo itong mga units na ito. So we have identified uh, a little over uh, 11,000 or to be exact 11,031 routes as of now. Why do I say that? Kasi po na naisabi po natin kanina na as when when we started the program hindi po na andun na lahat yung components at kompleto na. Hindi po ganun ang ang pagpapatakbo ng programang ito. Kasama po rito, I mentioned about the big role that the LGU has played and continue to play. Yung pagpaplano nila sa kanilang mga local routes po. Now, uh, I mentioned about the numbers that out of the uh, 1,575 LGUs, 1,379 have already been capacitated. Uh, one-month capacity building workshop po ang binigay natin sa bawat LGU. 
at uh, out of this 1,379, uh, 611 na po ang nag-submit ng LPTRP. Ang ibig ko sabihin, yung local public transport route plan nila, uh, magsasabi sila na ito po yung kakailanganin namin na rota at units doon sa mga rota that were identified and planned locally. Aside from that po, may nasabi po kami na yung tinatawag nating route rationalization ng pangmalakihan. Ito po yung sa Metro Manila because we know that uh, when we talk about transport planning or routes for that matter, para lang ma maintindihan natin in layman's term, they cut across jurisdiction from Rizal to uh, San Juan to Manila. Ibig sabihin, no one LGU can plan their own route, especially here in Metro Manila. Having said that, meron pong uh, kasalukuyang uh, study, yung route rationalization study, na ginagawa pa hanggang ngayon. At uh, we expect that the report will be given to us by the end of the month. But in the meantime, uh, as mentioned, hindi naman din pwede nating ititigil lahat. Otherwise, Eh, hindi lang yung mga chuper at mga operator ang kakalaban sa atin, hindi, pati yung mga mananakay. What, what, do I, what am I saying? So yung mga existing routes na gustong mag-consolidate po, they can proceed with consolidation and still run the routes that they have been running okay. even before. So yun po, yung na, yun po ang naipaplano natin patungkol sa inventory of units, inventory of routes, and how we address this in the short, medium, and long term po. I hope I answered your question, uh, Senator Nancy. Uh, Madam Chairperson, medyo naguluhan ako eh kasi parang may plano. <laughs> parang may plano na hindi kompleto yung plano. Parang ganun yung, yung dating eh. Uh, I don't know if uh, ako lang yung may ganong uh, pagkaintindi. Uh, siguro <laughs> Madam Chairperson, can we just request LTFRB to submit whatever uh, plan that they have or pwede yung bang mag-request baka pwedeng mag mag-submit sila sa committee ng isang mapa kung saan naka-identify ko ano ba yung ruta ilang ilang uh, anong status ng mga uh, operators natin dun sa mga ruta na yon dahil uh, parang mag mag naguluhan ako ng konti <laughs> yun lang pa pa Madam Chair so, Madam Chair <laughs> Madam Chair yes uh said Joel Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, may I just pursue that particular issue because uh, just like Senator Nancy, um, medyo naguluhan din po ako. No? Um, ang target, if I, if I am correct, as I was listening attentively to uh, 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 Sir Delgra of LTFRB, 1379, yung ba yung target? Tapos 611 lang yung nakapagbigay. So meaning to say... Uh, Yung uh, DOTR rationalization study mentioned in several uh, LTFRBs uh, circular, hindi pa talaga tapos yan. And uh, ilan lamang yung routes that have been uh, covered by this study. Is that correct, sir? Madam Chair, if I may. Go ahead, Chair Delga. Uh, perhaps... Uh, to put it simply, if I may, uh, for the sake of having to simplify it a little bit, uh, uh, Senator Joel, there are two types of uh, planning routes, yung route rationalization po. Yung local, yung, yung in kaugnayan, uh, in partnership and in coordination with the local government unit, doon sa local routes nila, sa loob ng kanilang jurisdiction. For example, in Bulacan. Uh, ano yung mga rota sa loob ng Bulacan na pwedeng ipaplano ng probinsya ng Bulacan. Eh, hindi po lalagpas kasi kung lalagpas po niyan, then you need to consult with the neighboring province in order to firm up that route that cuts across jurisdiction. In the same way with a city, for example, a city, say, for example, in uh, uh, Angeles City. So yung, yung ruta sa loob ng Angeles City, yun ang pinaplano lang ng LGU ng Angeles okay. City. Now, that is one type of route planning the okay. other type of route planning, yung malakihan po, yung sinabi po namin, ang tawag, uh, uh, anecdotally, we call it the MUSEP Route Rationalization Study. Uh, okay. Ito po yung mas malakihang uh, route rationalization study that covers not only the 17 LGU of Metro Manila, but also the neighboring 
the neighboring LGUs around the neighboring provinces of Metro Manila. Some parts of Bulacan, some LGUs in Rizal, some LGUs in Laguna, and some LGUs in uh, Cavite. Because, as, as I have mentioned, the concept of route is that, especially in a metropolis as big as Metro Manila, they cut across jurisdiction. So, ibig sabihin, yung pagkaplano, malakihan din. Aside from that po, uh, meron ding malakihan na uh, route rationalization study, yung tinatawag po namin inter-provincial, inter-regional. Ibig sabihin, yung, yung mga rota na tumatahak across regions, kailangan po natin paplanuhin. For example, yung galing Tacloban, going to Metro Manila, tatlong regions po pagdadaanan. Papaano po natin paplanuhin yan? So tuloy-tuloy po yung pagpaplano patungkol dyan. Ang, okay. ang sinasabi lang po namin dito sa POVMP, we laid the basis for the components on how to move forward in so far as the uh, program implementation is concerned. Okay, okay. sir. Sir, uh, bibigyan ko kayo ng example kayo na mismo nag, uh, nagsabi, no? yung sa, sa Bulacan. No? And I have been following this up for the past three, four years, Madam Chair. Three to four years. Unbelievable. I have all the documents to show, etc. In fact, I, I, I was about to uh, bring this on the floor and uh, deliver a privileged speech. For example, uh, Sir Del Grano, itong L LPTRP. Ngayon, how many local governments have submitted itong uh, local public transport route? Uh, as mentioned po, sa pangkalahatan po, uh, Senator uh, uh, Villanueva, uh, 611, 611 out of the 100, uh, 1,379 LGUs that were trained okay. to plan their own routes. Uh, if I may just make a qualifier in so far as Bulacan is concerned, uh, Your Honor, uh, Senator Villanueva. Sige po. Yung sinabi ko po kanina na yung MUSEP route rationalization study, uh, merong local public transport route plan for Bulacan per se. However, hindi po kabuuan ng probinsya ang maisakop doon sa LPTRP, yung pagpaplano ng probinsya para sa kanilang local routes. Kasi some of the LGUs na kalapit ng Metro Manila, kasama po doon sa mas malakihang route rationalization study, yung tinatawag po nating MUSEP route rationalization study. So yun po ang uh, gusto ko lang sabihin na uh, unlike in other places in Visayas and Mindanao, stand alone yung pagpaplano ng local public transport route plan. Sa Bulacan po, some of these LGUs na isama po dito sa mas malakihang pagpaplano. And yun po yung nagiging problema, sir. If some of the LGUs have not prepared their LT, LPTRPs, eh, magkakos ho ng malaking delay in granting of uh, their CPCs. Is that correct? Uh, actually po... Uh, Ganun po yung nangyari dito, sir. No? Ganun yung nangyari. If, if the DOTR does not conduct a rationalization study and just rely on on the LGUs, kung yung LGUs hindi din uh, gumalaw para dun sa kanilang LPTRP and the LGU does not prepare its uh, LPTRP, the applicant may be held hostage by the inaction or delay of the LGU or the DOTR itself. Yan po yung nangyari dito, uh, Sir Delgra, no? and it's a very specific example that I wanted to share uh, with the body. I have been following this up for for almost four years, five years, uh, Madam Chair. No? And last month, just last month, we forwarded again this concern to the DOTR. The fact is there are applicants that are not able to get franchised because of lack of LTR. Uh, RP, no? However, in the response again ng DOTR, and this is the fourth, fifth year, pinabalik na naman kami. Sabi sa amin, bumalik kayo, papasabihin nyo sa kanila, bumalik na naman ulit sila si LTFRB. So, ikot na po sila ng ikot. Mat matatapos na po itong term ng buong administrasyon, ikot lang po sila ng ikot. And, and that's just so disappointing, sir. Uh, if I may, uh, very short lang po. Uh, my apologies po, uh, Senator Villanueva. On that particular issue, Perhaps uh, uh, since you met, we will coordinate with the OTR as regards that. Uh, so and, that we, because and I'm sorry, sir. No, I, I have been so cooperative, so supportive of LTFRB, the OTR. Secretary Tugadi knows about this for years, for years. 
And it's just unfortunate. No? I, I don't have the face anymore to face to face my kababayans, these cooperatives. Nung bayanihan, lagi kong nire-raise dito, dito sa committee na ito. Not one of them, not one cooperative, from the tricycles to PU, PUJs, to UVs, to lahat. Ni isa sa kanila walang nakatanggap nung, uh, nung uh, ayuda, yung uh, amelioration uh, funding na pinasa ng uh, Senado. Na proud na proud kami sa Senate. O oh, ito pinasa namin. Pero ni isa sa kanila walang nakakuha. Hey, that's just so unfortunate. Uh, sorry, Madam Chair. No? And, uh, kaya iniiwasan ko muna umaten sana dahil mainit pa rin ulo ko dito sa usapin na ito. But I hope, sir, sir LDFRB, Uh, I have very high respect to you, sir. I hope that you look into this. Thank you. Yes, sir. We will address, sir. Thank you, uh, Senator Joe. Well, I, I, I realize talagang ang tagal na nga nito at, at matagal ka na rin nakatuto. Kaya nga dito sa Bayanihan, talaga naglagay tayo ng provi provision na walang pwedeng magbago muna ngayon. Na hindi sa, wala munang pwedeng ipairal na mga memorandum stopping uh, our PUV drivers at this time na may pandemic na kulang pa talaga yung suporta ng ating pamahalaan. Um, I, I just want to bring up, ano, just for the clarity of this uh, discussion, supposedly, pagka ikaw ay nagpa-upgrade, nagpa-modernize, ang Class 2 vehicle, gagastos ka ng 2.4 million. Pag Class 3, 2.6 million. Uh, mga Chinese-made uh, vehicles ito. Ang tanong ko dito kay Chairman Delgra, tama ba na 40,000 per month ang amortization para dito? Number one, that's the first question. No? Number two, kung kunyari gusto nga makisanib ng ating mga drivers sa isang kooperatiba, yung kooperatiba na na-establish na yon requirement ba nila na dapat uh, nakamodernize ka na? I guess these are questions kasi mabigat talaga ito sa ating mga drivers. Pero I see the hand of Mr. Martin. Uh, Robert Martin, ano, ano pong experience ninyo dito? Uh, Nakamute pa po kayo. Uh, isang magandang umaga, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Nancy, Senator Joel, sa mga tulad ni OTR at sa mga kasamunatisahanin ng transportasyon. Ma'am, yung pong tinatanong niyo nga, uh, 40,000 o sa consolidation, nabangit ni Mr. Yumor kanina na inaabot ng 40,000. Base po sa aking karanasan. At uh, nabangit po niya na sa consolidation process, may ginagas pa rin pong 11,000 pesos ang operator. Madam Chair, through my experience, I form a corporation. Nag-consolidate po ako doon sa mga tinatawag nating developmental route, Meron po kami, Madam Chair, ng mga regular routes sa Bulacan, Nueva Ecija, and also in Manila. But we did not spend so much money for the consolidation process. Ang aming pong ginawa, sinunod po namin ang proseso, we submitted all documents to so LTFRB Region 3, LTFRB Central Office, LTFRB sa, sa South, sa Region 4. Then we paid the corresponding fees for the consolidation process. So maliit lang po ang gastos. Bakit ba kailangan mong mag-consolidate? Para sa kalaman din po ng ating mga kasamahan, base po sa aking karanasan. Yung pong mga individual operator, base po rito sa natawang ating PUV Modernization Program, ay kailangan po ang isang ruta ay mag-consolidate, Madam Chair. Sapagkat hindi nga po inaalaw mangutang isang individual ng ating banko. Through consolidation process, ang mga individual operators po, sila rin po ang magiging stockholder once they form a corporation or cooperative. Sila rin po ang may-ari ng mga sakyan. Through their application, under consolidation, magkakaroon po silang manifestation na ang kanilang mga ruta ay ipinapanganan po nila sa isang cooperative o sa isang korporasyon. So they own also the unit na i-approve po ng board. So okay, Mr. Po, Martin, if I may cut you off. I have, I, you know what, it's good that you were able to incorporate and consolidate. My yes. question, sir, is, totoo ba na pag nag-modernize, mga 40,000 pesos ang amortization every month? Madam Chair, napakalaki po niyan. At the moment, ang aking monthly amortization, even in Bulacan, in Manila, and in Nueva Ecija, inaabot po kami ng 27,000 to 29,000 a month. 
Pero Hindi. modernized na po. Modernized po yan. And Class compliant. Three, yes po, Madam Chair. Okay, next question. Uh, di, ito naman po, sa dali lang po, ah, Mr. Martin. Uh -huh. Ito sa kay uh, Mr. Delgra. May nagpadala sa akin, may mga co-ops na registered and accredited pero hindi pa rin considered consolidated kasi hindi pa nagihiring ang LTFRB sa kanila. Yun daw ang dahilan kung bakit nauna pa yung mga ibang kumpanya na tinatawag nga na kapitalista, ganyan, iniipit nila yung drivers na nag apply for consolidation. So ilan ba talaga ang nakapending sa inyo ngayon, Mr. Delgra, na nagiintay ng hearing para magkaroon ng uh, prangkisa o ma-accredit? Uh, as to the numbers, Madam Chair, at the outset, if I may uh, be given time to submit okay. that, uh, to the So committee. si Mr. Yumul, but, but if, kayo... If, if, ah, I'm sorry. Me Madam meron Chair. ba kayong application para mag-consolidate? Opo, Madam Chair. Actually, may mga grupo po kami. Uh, last uh, 2019 pa po, nag-file na kami ng consolidation. Hanggang ngayon po, wala pang notice of hearing. Tapos yung isa naman, nakapag-hearing po nung uh, last December before the deadline of December 31. Ang problema lang, katulad nung nasabi nyo may sumulat sa inyo, nauna pa sa amin yung mga bagong operator. Kahit nakapag-hearing okay. na po namin. Okay, pa Mr. Delgra, sagutin... Sorry, I cut off ko kayo para we can have more of a discussion here. Dahil I, I don't want this hearing to overextend. Um, Mr. Delgra, sagutin po ninyo, bakit hanggang nga hindi pa na-approve o hindi pa nag-hear yung application ng grupo ni Mr. Yumul? Uh, again, in so far as Mr. Yumul's situation is concerned, I will have to refer to Region 3 on, on the status of the case, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, that will form part of my submission to the committee. As yes, we, we will follow up on that, sir. Kasi, syempre, ayaw naman natin na naparatangan kayo na o oh, okay. makakorporasyon lang, ganyan. Okay naman ang korporasyon eh. Basta merong inclusivity. Ibig sabihin, yung mga dating nandun na, eh huwag naman sila pa yung naagrabyado, <laughs> di ba? So, okay naman po yun na mag-consolidate tayo. Pero, Eh, yung mga dati nang nandyan, kumbaga, para bang sila pa yung na-displace. So, uh, it, uh, yes, yun lang po yung sa amin. So, we will really follow up kasi our our job here in the Senate is also to make sure that the disenfranchised are are heard. Diba? So, okay. Now, I would Madam like Chair, to hear naman. Chair, yeah. just, just to Chair, also right? add lang, just to add lang, Madam Chair, dun sa isasubmit, baka pwede rin ho uh, makahingi yung uh, how many CPC applicants are unable to get their applications approved due to lack of LPTRP, uh, Madam Chair. Ayaw nating maging hostage sila just because of this. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, Madam, Madam Chair, Chair uh, uh, Sir Nancy, just one moment. A brief reply, uh, a brief uh, question from Sir Nancy, a brief Ay, reply. Madam Chair, pag, okay. pandagdag lang dun for submission, Kung pwede, okay. pakilagay na din yung kung kailan ba sila nag-apply para makita natin kung gaano katagal na talaga pending yung mga applications nila. Yun lang po, Madam Chair. I think that's a good point. So I want a, a brief answer from you, uh, Chairman Delga, for, uh, uh, regarding addressing the question of Senator Villanueva and also the request of Senator Nancy. And then I want to hear from the Move Us One Coalition kasi ito, advocacy group ito. They're neither with the LTFRB or uh, with the drivers per se, but what will be better for the flow of uh, transportation in our country. So go ahead, uh, Chair Delgra, please respond. Uh, yes, po, uh, very quick, uh, our quick reply is uh, uh, as to the request for submission from Senator Bina and Senator Villanueva. Uh, together with the, uh, the uh, particular concern raised by Mr. Yumol, we will submit, uh, Madam Chair, if not tomorrow, uh, two days from now, on, in so far as the data are concerned. Thank you. Madam okay. Chair. But but if I may qualify, uh, just to a very quick rejoinder lang po. Pagpapalinaw lang po ito. Uh, not not uh, pagpapalinaw lang po. Yung sinasabi po nating petition for consolidation po, hindi yung petition to apply for a franchise. Yung sinasabi po nating consolidation, it is a petition to consolidate. Ibig sabihin po, 
yung kung ano yung existing unit nyo, uh, kasama pa rin po doon sa petition for consolidation. Kung ano yung rota, kung saan kayo tumatahak, yun din po yung rota na tatahakin nyo, even after consolidation. Yung next steps na sinasabi ko po, yung pagkukuha ng bagong unit at yung pagpapatakbo ng mga modern units under what we call a fleet management system. Yun po yung mga moving forward, yung mga other components sa programa. But it starts with a consolidation. I just want to keep on emphasizing that, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Po. So what you're saying, Chairman Delga, is that after they consolidate, um, there's no guarantee that they will get a franchise. There are certain requirements yet to be met. And part of that is maybe modernization of the fleet. Uh, Am I correct? The petition for consolidation will result to a consolidated single franchise for that co-op. Ibig sabihin, may prangkisa pa rin, Madam Chair. Uh, in, in the interim po, uh, just essentially, just to describe the process, essentially, we would still be using whatever existing units they have. So long as they are roadworthy, papasa sa LTO. Yun lang po ang sinasabi natin dito. Yung sinasabi po natin na pag-uutang sa banko, kung, kung may pera po sila, hindi na po kailangan pumunta sa banko, pwede silang dumiretso at bumili ng tinatawag na compliant unit. Those units na pumasa na sa national standards under the uh, DTI. And then, uh, with the other components of uh, fleet management, pwede na lang patakbuhin. But what I'm saying is that it is the modern... I, I would like to re-emphasize it again. The modern, the deployment of modern unit is not a requirement for modernization, at least at the time of filing and even at the time of the grant of the consolidated franchise. So this March uh, deadline does not mean that all of these uh, Jeeps need to be modernized. Uh, I mean, as long as they're Madam Chair. Okay. Absolutely. That's for the record, right, sir? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, um, may we hear from MUVAS 1, uh, Dr. Robert C. I heard you have a, a brief presentation. Uh, uh, Senator uh, uh, Grace Poe, uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much for allowing us to speak. I I will just speak, you know, uh, uh, because our, we have a, a long, uh, a fairly long a comment and report on PUV modernization. We will make this available po to the industry and to the public. Kasi po, we have been following PUV modernization already for many years. Our view as a commuter group is it is absolutely essential. Mobility is a basic human need. We need safe, sufficient, convenient public transport. At hindi po ito Possible, unless we make some fundamental changes. And from our point of view, yung fundamental changes na ito involve not only yung vehicle uh, upgrade or modernization, but a change in the business model. Uh, dapat uh, mawala, mawala na rin yung boundary system natin because it promotes also yung on-street competition, which is unsafe. Importante po yung consolidation for the basic reason na hindi kayang mag, uh, gumawa ng schedule, hindi kayang gumawa ng predictable timetable for commuters unless all units on a route operate as one team. So importante po, I, we, are, we are pleading to our colleagues and partners in the transport industry, importante po yung consolidation for this purpose. It will lead to efficiency and convenience of commuters who are your customers. So that is, uh, that is quite basic po. Uh, second point is that we need to have a lot more support to the road transport sector for many decades. In fact, from the start of this government, uh, since independence, yung framework natin is parang yung road public transport, parang private sector enterprise yan. And for the longest period, halos walang support galing sa gobyerno. And this is where we need to rectify the long period, the long history of neglect. In fact, when you look at the budgets 
not just last year's budget, many decades of budgets, halos walang support for public transport infrastructure. Yun yung, for example, yung support sa mga bus stops, terminals, garages, depots, stations, plus yung, for example, yung PUV-only lanes, halos walang support in terms of uh, the operations of public transport. So nakikita natin, in almost all other countries, public transport is high quality and available kasi po may subsidy from government. And the, the problem po is we often think of yung subsidy for public transport as a bad word. We should now change that around. We should think of ways how we can support our public transport in terms of yung uh, fleet replacement as well as for yung operations. If the operations need the subsidy, so be it. If our infrastructure needs more support, we need to make that happen. Kasi po, yung infrastructure natin for so many years, it was largely to support motor vehicles, mainly private cars. So yung history of highway and road development was to support yung motor vehicle owners. And recently, syempre, railway development has progressed. So maganda rin to. Pero kulang na kulang yung support for road-based public transport. So this is why we support fully yung bill po ni uh, Senator Grace po. Uh, a key point also is sa PUV modernization. In the past, I think uh, the balance between carrots and sticks, hindi maganda. You know, it was mostly yung sticks, pero kulang sa carrots. Importante ngayon yung incentives. We need to actually provide sufficient support, financing, subsidy to help our colleagues, drivers, workers, operators in the transport sector to consolidate and to modernize. So maganda po yung lalakihin natin ang, uh, ang equity subsidy. And here we would actually go not just for yung uh, proposal dito, uh, I think the the current bill has a proposal for I think a 10% uh, a 10% uh, subsidy based on the value of the vehicle. Uh, it should be more in the nature of mga 25%. And in the past, yung Move as One Coalition is pushing for uh, 500,000 as the minimum equity subsidy for a uh, replacement of the old jeepney. So if we have that level of subsidy, it will actually attract a lot more support from our colleagues in the transport sector and will facilitate the movement. And when you think of it, Madam Chair, you know the amount that would be required in terms of that equity subsidy is much less than even the investment in the Metro Manila subway. So Metro Manila subway is, of course, a good thing. But when we think of all our public transport users, commuters nationwide, they need as much attention as the potential users of the Metro Manila subway. So this is not something that is outrageous that we are asking for. We are also uh, Mr. Asking, C, yes, yes, Mr. Ma C, can you just submit your recommendations? But I'm glad that you pointed out that the subsidy needs to be at least 25 percent. Uh, yes, when we when we present this and and uh, correlating it also with the other investments in transport, whereas this is direct subsidy to the drivers that need the jobs and the support of the government. So thank you, but uh, I would also like to give a chance before I, I give my recommendation. I want to hear a brief statement from Piston uh, and also from uh, the JODAP and Stop and Go Coalition. Kung pwede lang po, kasi lahat gusto kong bigyan ng pagkakataon, no? pero kailangan tayo mag-adjourn uh, soon. So Piston muna, ano po yung masasabi ninyo dito sa usapin natin ngayon? Uh, magandang umaga po, uh, Madam Senador, at uh, siyempre sa ating mga, lahat ng ating mga senador. At yun din sa ating uh, Ang kinatawa ng LTFRB. 
Ang uh, usapin po ng uh, modernization, madam, ay uh, alas maglilimang taon na at uh, limang taon na rin na nag-iikaos yung kabuhayan ng mga driver at mga operator. At uh, lagi nga itong, uh, lagi itong nasa pangamba. Sabi nga po kanina ni Pangulong Yumul, ay uh, dalawa yung pinangangambahan namin, eh, yung uh, pwede niya at saka itong, uh, itong plano ng LTFRB na i-wise out yung kabuhayan ng, uh, ng mga driver at mga operator. Dahil yung usapin po ng uh, modernization, na itinutulak ng, uh, ng ating uh, ng LTFRB at ng DOTR ay bahagi ito ng programa sa usapin po ng monopolyo, sa usapin ng transportasyon. Dahil uh, malalaki na lamang ng mga negosyante ang uh, binibigyan nila ng karapatan para dito sa usapin ng uh, pagpapatakbo ng moda ng transportasyon dito sa ating bansa. Kami po sa bahagi po namin sa trans sa bahagi po namin sa piston ay uh, wala kaming tutol doon sa usapin ng modernization ang uh, marim po namin kinukundi na dito, itong absolute na bakit kailangan namin pumasok sa corporation, bakit namin kailangan pumasok sa um, sa kooperatiba, bakit namin kailangan pumasok sa place management, na kung tutusin po yung mga association ng mga driver at mga operator, ito ay consolidated na nagsama-sama yung mga operator para magtipon at makapagbuo ng samahan at makamagserbisyo sa mga mamamayan. Pero bakit tinutula kami ng LTFRB na pumasok kami sa consolidation, sinasabi po nila sa ilalim po ng 2007-011 na sinasabi nila one route, one franchise, one operator. Ibig sabihin yan ay uh, yung uh, one route and one franchise ay talagang hahawakan ng malalaking mga corporation na may kapasidad na magpatakbo ng mga muda ng transportasyon. Tapos yung sinasabi okay. po kanina ni Chairman Degra, ma Madam, ay uh, yung uh, usapin po ng route rationalization ay uh, bakit po sa ngayon ay yung mga mismong lehitimong may mga ruta ng mga jeep ay uh, linalagyan po nila ng mga modernized na mga minibus. Iniwawaysa po nila mga traditional of jeep na ito yung matagal na ng service sa mga ruta. Ito ho ba yung layunin ng modernization, tanggalan ng kabuhayan, yung ating mga driver at mga operator at patuloy na mahirapan din ang ating mga mananakay, ang ating mga mamamayan. Okay. Thank you po. Um, I think I see your point. Uh, yung punto ninyo, again, uh, ang kailangan dito, inclusivity yung nang nadidisplace na iba. Um, Alto okay. DAP. Uh, hindi, I'm sorry. Ano bang isa pang grupo? Alto DAP at saka samahan transport operators. Kung hindi pa, okay. Um, Mr. Vargas, kayo po, Alto DAP. Or hindi, stop yes, and go na lang mukha. Yes, ma'am. Oh, alto dap okay. muna, mabilis yes, lang, tapos stop yes, and go sa mahan ng uh, transport. Uh, magandang umaga po, Madam Chair, at sa lahat ng Senador, sa lahat po ng... Ako po, may issue lang ako. Apat na bagay lang po, mabilis lang to. Unang-una po, yung consolidation natin, hanggang March 31 na lang. Ngayon, paano na po, yung mga ibang magkukonsolidation pa, tatanggapin pa o hindi na. Pagkatapos po, yung po ba... Papalo na po kung hindi tinanggap, yun po ba'y mapupunta sa malalaking ano, malalaking kooperatiba o tra or korporasyon. Ang pangalawa ko po, yung mga rota po ng traditional jeepney na hindi pa tumatakbo, patakbuhin na po dahil one year na po, nagutom na gutom, may mga namatay na po dyan. Tapos po, ah, kagaya po, yung sinasabi kong rota ng traditional jeep, kagaya po ng Antipolo Cubao, merong sulat, ang mabutihing mayor namin, si Andrea... Inares, na sumulat si LT5B na patakbuhin na itong traditional jeep. Hang, uh, dated po ito ng December 10, 2020. Hanggang ngayon po, wala pa. Pagkatapos po, yung pong mga rota ng jeep, bakit po pinapasok ng mga bases? Uh, tapos po, yung isa pa, yung pong uh, sa modern, yung bangko po natin dalawa, may sapat po bang pondo para i-modernize natin lahat ng moda ng transportation na PUJ dito sa buong Pilipinas. Yun lang po, Madam Sir. Karamat po. Thank you sa inyong very pointed pero maikling presentation, Mr. Vargas. Stop and go coalition naman. Ay, magandang umaga po, Madam Chair. Uh, sa kalaman po ng lahat, ang stop and go po ay hindi po tumututol sa programa ng DOTR, LTFRB. Kaya lang po, hindi namin po kaya dahilan sa mga sumusunod. Una, yung consolidation na napag-uusapan kanina. Itong consolidation kasi, Madam Chair, ito yung gagawin na kooperatiba or korporasyon, yung aming dating uh, kabuhayan bilang isang uh, 
individual franchise. So pag kami kooperatiba o korporasyon na po, Madam Chair, mawawala na po yung aming karapatan, kapanatagan sa aming kita. Kasi depende na sa pag-uusap ng kooperatiba or korporasyon kung pag magkano ang ibibigay po sa amin. Pangalawa itong consolidation, Madam Chair, dito uh, sinasabi ni Mada Chairman Delgra kanina na kami ba ay tatanggapin kahit asasasyon kami na mag-apply ng consolidation? Ang sagot ni Chairman, opo. Kaya lang, marami kang dapat i-comply. Una, doon kasi sa consolidation, Madam Chair, kailangan mong magsumiti ng dalawang, meron kang may bibigay na terminal, bawat, bawat dulo ng inyong ruta. At siyempre, bago kang makakuha ng terminal, meron kang uh, i-apply sa city hall or uh, munisipyo na para makabigyan ka ng mayor's permit. So dito pa lang sa zoning na proseso ng mayor's permit, pag ikaw ay pinupolitika o ayaw ka ng isang LGO, hindi ka bibigyan. Katulad yung sinabi kanina ni Senator Villanueva na magiging hostage po kami dito. Kaya yan po yung sa consolidation. At dito yata sa consolidation, Madam Chair, parang dito yata ginagamit ng LTPRB ngayon kung bakit hindi kami nakakatakbo hanggang ngayon. Kasi yung biyaheng heritage monumento, biyaheng Santo Niño monumento, nakakatakbo na sila mula pa noong October. Pero kami, mula noong March 17 hanggang ngayon, ay hindi pa po kami nakakatakbo. Maraming ruta yung amin na sasakupan na hindi nakakatakbo sa ngayon. Yung Santa Maria Monumento, MacArthur, Santa Maria and Lex Monumento, uh, Marilao ano Monumento. Daw, uh, Mr. I, ano, ano daw po ang dahilan kung bakit hindi kayo nakakapagpatakbo pa doon sa mga ruta na yon? Hindi ko alam, Madam Chair, kasi sa totoo lang meron na kaming sulat noong July na nakikiusap sa LTPRB na kami naman willing na sumunod dito sa protocol na ipinatutupad ng IETF. Pero wala silang sagot, Madam Chair. Uh, Chairman yeah. Delgra, bakit kaya po wala pang sagot hanggang ngayon? Uh, on this particular aspect, Your Honor, I have to get back to my team on on this particular route that they're referring to. I'm okay. Not, I'm uh, not prepared to answer the question at this point in time. But okay, we'll, we'll, we'll ask for the submission, uh, Chair. Yes, yes, Madam Chair. Thank we you. Will... Mr. Zaldi, tama ba yung sinabi ninyo na kung meron kayong kooperatiba, kailangan meron din kayong mga terminal? Yes, ayon po sa requirements po sa pag-apply ng consolidation. Batay din sa requirements na ibinaba ng LTPRB, Madam Chair. Oo, kasi syempre yung paglalagyan ng mga jeep na yun, ano, uh, importante. So malaking gastos rin yan. Uh, importante na magkaroon talaga ng designated areas. Yes. No? Pero... Yun nga, added cost yun. Kasi bibilin mo yung lupa o kaya i-rentahan mo yung lupa, hindi po ba? At ang mabigat, Madam Chair, kung ikaw ay inayawan ng LGO, hindi oh. ka pagbigyan ng zoning. Kasi hindi ka naman nila kapartido, Madam Chair. So mahosted okay. nga kami dito. Okay, thank hindi you. Thank you po. Yes, Madam Chair. Hindi katulad kasi yung dati na sa individual franchise po kami, ang tinitinan na lang namin kung paano namin ma-maintain yung aming sasakyan na maayos para safe na sakyan ng mga tao. Pero sa ngayon kasi, doon sa programa na maganda yung presentasyon ng LTPRB, kaya lang iba kasi sa nangyayari. Katulad niyan, sinabi yung consolidation. Pangalawa, yung rationalization. Kahit ikaw ay kooperatiba na Madam Chair o korporasyon, kung ikaw ay hindi naman maka-avail doon sa unit na halimbawa itong ruta namin na Monumento Munoz, kailangan Class 3, dito sa Inlex, Class 3, MacArthur, Class 3, Commonwealth, Class 3. Pag hindi ka rin maka-avail ng ganito na unit, hindi ka rin po pwede dito sa ruta nito. Kundi, alil, aalisin ka, Madam Chair. Talaga? Kasi kanina yeah. sinabi naman ni Chairman Delgra, hindi naman kailangan kaagad lahat yon, As long as roadworthy, di ba, Chairman? Madam Chair, he mentioned, he mentioned about a route that, passed, that traverses EDSA, if I may understand it that way. Para monumento to Munoz. Kasi yes. may polisiya po yung uh, MMDA uh, together with the OTR and LTFRB na uh, except to traverse, uh, except na tatawid, hindi po pwede yung ibang uh, modes of public transport along EDSA except bus. 
Okay, I understand. Uh, nga, siguro yung dalawang punto lang, stone. yung rota at sa yung sinasabi niyang bagong unit, baka magkaibang punto lang po ito. We just need to clarify, Madam Chair. Yes, I, I understand your point, uh, Chairman Delga. Uh, maraming salamat po, Sir. Uh, Senator Villanueva, before uh, we go to Samahang Transport, I recognize Senator Villanueva. Go ahead, uh, yeah. Senator Joel. Thank, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. No, just, just one point that I'd like to raise as being echoed a while ago by Piston, Alto Dap, Stop and Go with regard to uh, consolidation. No? Uh, we heard that uh, small operators are recommended to consolidate, uh, to pull resources, meet minimum credit requirements. But uh, Chairman Delgra, uh, do you have any data on consolidated operators that still failed in their loan applications? I mean, how many of the uh, 76,000 plus consolidated uh, operators still failed in their loan application? Uh, Senator Villanueva, Your Honor, uh, sa ngayon po, uh, wala akong specific data, but we will submit along that line. But if I may just qualify uh, the observation uh, being made, uh, yung financial component, and if I may, uh, Madam Chair, because I will also... Uh, LTFRB might want to also say something about the provision in the bill addressing the financial cost of the modernization. So as regards din po, uh, uh, please uh, allow me uh, uh, two or three minutes to, to explain the financial component po. The financial component of the program uh, as, as uh, <clears throat> approved by the government financial institution is a formula which we call 5, 6, 7, 8 before, now it's 160. But we'll start with the 5. Yung 5 po is yung 5% equity. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 5% equity. So it's a very low equity on the part of the operator. Uh, I'm sorry, on the part of the borrower right. applicant who is a co-op or a corporation. Uh, pangalawa, yung 6 po, yung 6% interest. Again, uh, under prevailing rate po, mababa pa rin yan. Uh, alam natin, like for example, going back to the equity, as we have made uh, uh, consultations, yung equity, pag-uutang ka, kukuha ka ng isang uh, <coughs> sasakyan galing sa kasa, uh, umaabot po sa mga 15 to 20 or even higher equity. No? But uh, in so far as this program is concerned, uh, the OTR was able to convince the uh, government financial institution to support this program in a very generous manner. So yung 5% equity, 6% interest, and the one I mentioned earlier about seven years to pay, we know that, and the only collateral here, uh, Your Honor, is the unit. No? And we know that the unit, when you use it over time, is depreciating. So the risk on the part, the part of the GFIs is getting higher or increasing over time, and yet they're willing to, to extend the, uh, the unit. Yung 8 po originally represents the 80,000 equity subsidy, which is actually coming from, from Congress no? by way of a budget. Uh, but uh, the DOTR, Secretary Artugade, especially during the time of the pandemic, in order to push the program further in amidst the pandemic, uh, issued another department order doubling the amount kaya naging 160,000 pesos per unit na po yung equity subsidy. Chairman so, Delgra, may I just uh, cut you there? Kasi when you talk about kanina yung 5% equity, 6% interest, etc. For example, I have here with me yung sa DBP. Ang, ang kasama ko dito, borrowers should be a co-op or corporation eh. Shuttle mortgage, AFCS, GPS, franchise for seven years. And again, borrowers should be a cooperative or a corporation. I remember distinctly, uh, Madam Chair, anong time na meron tayong uh, uh, TWG, yung transport group ng FEDUDAP during the August, August 2018 TWG meeting of the Committee on Transportation, they are already complaining about the difficulty in complying with the requirements to access the credit facilities and financing as well, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, na pati yung, uh, I remember yung fleet system, no? if, I, if I remember it uh, right. And the group said that bank requirements have to 
have to, uh, to have end to end terminals is not feasible, especially in a densely populated area. I just hope that uh, this is already being uh, addressed, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to point that out. Thank you. Um, can we can we hear now from Samahang Transport Operators ng Pilipinas? Kaisa isang babae yata ngayon dyan sa, wala si Ma'am Zeni. Oh, go ahead. What's your name, Ma'am? Naka-mute pa po kayo. Ma'am, di ko pa rin kayo marinig. Ayun. Hello, Ma'am. An ano po pangalan niyo ulit? Juliet De Jesus po. Okay, Ma'am Juliet, go ahead po. Ano pong Narinig pananaw ninyo? Po, Madam Chair. Narinig, Narinig po ako. Opo, naririnig so, po. Go okay. ahead. Salamat po sa pagkakataon at pag-iimbita sa akin. Ako po ay nasa city operation. Ngayon po, ngayon po, uh, meron po kasi kaming, yung modernization na to, meron na po kaming rationalized route na ibinigay ng LTFRB. 35 routes po ito. Ito po, yung binigyan kami ng special permit, Pero hindi po ito yung existing route namin before kasi due to COVID. Ngayon, ang naging problema po namin dito sa mga rationalized route namin, nag-overlap po kami sa jeepney. Yung po mga traditional jeep na pinaandar po nila, eh nag-overlap dun sa rutang ibinigay nila sa mga iba-ibang rutang ibinigay sa bus. Nabanggit nga po kanina ni Mr. Vargas na yung antipolo, ina ano niya sa amin, sinasabi niyang, Hindi kami dapat doon kasi matagal na sila doon. Pero wala po kami magagawa kung naibigay sa amin yan ng LTFRB. Ang nagiging problema lang po namin dito sa mga rationalized route, eh wala po kami mga staging area, ay nakakagulo po yung mga bus namin sa mga rutang na ibigay kasi po mahirap po kumuha ng mga uh, garahe, lalo na malaki po yung aming bus, sa mga rutang na ibigay sa amin na dating jeep ni route. Yan po yung isang problema namin. And number two po, hindi po na, napunta yung mga sarutan na to, yung mga area-based operator. May sample po ako sa area-based operator. Ang isang operator po na nandun po sa San Jose del Monte, sa Bulacan, nag-ooperate, eh napapunta po ng Antipolo Cubao. Kita niyo po yung dead run namin. from San Jose del Monte going to Cubao is a 30-kilometer dead run. Ngayon po, ah, hiningi po namin ito sa LTFRB na to allow drop and pick up para naman po yung losses namin sa expenses namin sa diesel ay eh, madagdagan ng konte yung aming kita. Kasi po, sample lang po lang po kayo ng 30 kilometers dead run. Hindi lang po bulakan to sa lahat po na ruta ng rationalized route. 30, meter, 30 kilometers dead run, noong pong nagkwenta kami, eh, 30, 30 pesos pa lang po yung diesel. Ngayon po, 38 na. So, round trip po yung isang bus, 60 kilometers yun. Ang talo po namin sa isang araw, sa isang unit, 2,280 pesos. Kung nag-ooperate po kayo ng 30 units, eh, ang laki po ng aming losses, samantalang yung ibinigay po sa aming ruta, Hindi po kami makabayad, break even lang, bayad sa diesel, bayad sa driver, conductor, na hindi po namin mabayaran yung aming mga garahe na nirerenta ang malaki. Kasi nando pa po kami, matagal na kami doon. And ito pa po yung aming problema. Yung po, nga, yung po aming modernization, eh considering nasa pandemic tayo, eh kailangan mag-replit ka pag nag-face out ka ng 15 years, Hinihingi po sana namin sa DOTR at saka sa LTFRB, bigyan naman po kami kahit na konting leeway yung two years man lang na moratorium na tanggapin nila kami kahit face out na kami ng dalawang taon. Pag natapos na po yung COVID, pwede na po kaming mag-replete ulit. Tapos ang problema po namin, yung mga old loans po namin, lahat po kasi kami mga maraming utang because modernization, 2013 pa po kami sumusunod sa LTFRB. Ngayon po, yung mga utang namin, lahat po yan, dinidemanda na kami ng banko, inaaway na kami ng banko, lahat po yan, wala kaming magawa because yung operation po namin ngayon is just to serve the commuting public kasi po, meron kaming obligasyon being a public transport operator. Sana naman po, sa pagkakataong ito, nandyan po si Chairman Delgra, nandyan ang DOTR, kasi po yung Landbank at saka DBP, 
marami na pong nag-apply sa amin, pero just the same, wala pa pong nakakakuha kasi maraming issues na hindi maintindihan kasi po na consortium, na ganito. Eh sana maintindihan naman po sana ngayon ng LTFRB at DOTR, tulungan kami dun sa old accounts namin, how we will communicate with the commercial bank before, o kaya itong land bank and DBP, if they can help us out, para maayos po namin kahit na magkaroon kami ng interest payment lang, moratorium, para unti-unti. Tapos po yung sinasabi namin dead run, napakalaking tulong po sa amin yan. Kasi mababawasan ang aming loss on a daily basis. Tapos po okay. yung tinatawag na ano po, yung uh, yung overlapping nga po ng jeep at saka ng sampo lang ko po kayo ng isang ruta. Isang ruta na 173 units lang ang bus. Ang other modes of transport nasa 2,000 ho. Merong jeep, merong UV, may modern cooperative, etc. Na pare-pareho pong nandun sa mga ruta na yan. Okay. Yan po yung nakikita Salamat ng po. Um, Chairman Delgra, can you briefly respond to some of her concerns? Maybe not all, then you can just submit those uh, later on. Yes po. Uh, if I may uh, just focus on the financial part po. Uh, we are actually going to have a coordination meeting with the government financial institution. Uh, so in so far as uh, DBP and Land Bank is concerned, yung concern nila tungkol sa existing loans, we'll take it up with the banks uh, this week po. And we will keep you updated on that one. Pangalawa, uh, in so far as yung meron pong uh, sinusulong, uh, konsepto po ito ng DOTR, no? Uh, Uh, with the uh, Secretary Tugade na sumusulong dito, yung bus modernization program. So, hindi lang po yung sa PUJ kung hindi meron po sa bus. So, uh, uh, it's actually being pushed with, again, with the two government financial institutions. Uh, so, kung uh, this is in so far as yung sinasabi ni, uh, ni uh, Juliet de Jesus patungkol doon sa pagdadrop and substitute yung pagkuku pagpapalit ng luma doon sa uh, pagpapalit ng bago doon sa mga luma uh, they can avail of the benefit of the bus modernization program uh, in short uh, briefly lang po yun po ang response namin but in the other Actually, concerns we're taking note of it so that uh, nililista na po namin ma'am uh, madam chair so that we'll be able to, uh, not only address the committee but even address uh, the Jesus directly on the matter. Thank you, Paul. Oh, thank you. Because we're, we're uh, taking note of this transcript para we can remind you. Actually, Chairman Delgra, if I can request for you to recommend to me, because I'm also Chairman of Banking and Financial Institutions, the committee in the Senate, and one of the bills that is put forward is the guide bill, which will increase capitalization of the land bank in the DBP. Perhaps we can put a provision there that says a certain portion of that should be for transport modernization, focusing on uh, smaller enterprises within the, the transport modernization program, uh, meaning the cooperatives. Yes, po. Um, Madam Chair, very quickly, lang po, on two points that you have mentioned, and so far as the financial cost is concerned. Uh, If you would recall at the, uh, my opening statement, uh, we have expressed support to the bill. Among the things that we appreciated is institutionalizing the financial support to the modernization program, which, as you have mentioned in your proposed bill under Section 10, an appropriation uh, uh, coming from uh, the MVUC. That would, if ever this will materialize, Madam Chair, this would be a huge, this will create a huge impact on the ongoing modernization program. And that's the reason why, in so far as the financial support that is being pushed under the proposed bill, we would support. Pangalawa po, uh, we know that in so far as the government financial uh, institutions are concerned, at the start, as we have mentioned earlier, the financial package is very generous. And therefore, on the part of the bank, as we might understand, uh, the little that I know of banking practice, eh, tataas yung risk, lending risk on the part of the bank. Uh, <clears throat> having said that, um, 
nakita po natin initially, this is anecdotal, Madam Chair, so that you probably appreciate from where the banking sectors are coming, uh, the government financial institutions are coming from. Initially, DBP and Land Bank allocated 1.5 billion pesos each from their from their own funds. But uh, over time, uh, Land Bank has exceeded their target. Ibig sabihin po, ina-accommodate pa nila yung mga loan applications coming from the co-op even beyond the ceiling that they have set initially. Kaya ngayon, I understand they have increased it to 5, uh, 5 billion. On the part of DBP, the same thing also, 1.5 billion initially. And ganun din po, uh, dahil sa maraming loan application, they have increased it also to 5 billion, which I understand has already been increased beyond 5 billion. Uh, I am not at liberty at this point kung magkano nang itinaas uh, beyond the 5 billion that they have initially said. Uh, by the way, Madam Chair, this uh, this increase actually happened uh, during the pandemic and that's the reason why. What 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 am I saying here, Madam Chair uh, and Your Honours, is that even the government financial institutions see the need to support this. And I would like to believe, we would like to believe, that uh, with the risk that they're taking, we would like to support the program, no? as they are actually supporting the program. So, going back to what we have mentioned in support of this proposed bill, mas nakakatulong palalo dito sa proposal na percentage of the MBUC will actually go to funding the uh, financial cost of the modernization program. Thank you very much. I guess, I guess my concern also, and, and I don't know if I can obtain this information from the banks, but there are a lot in the bank, um, a, a big portion of it, might have been allocated to companies that have already the financial capability. Baka yung maliliit hindi nakaka-obtain. So um, I'm glad to know that they're utilizing the, the allocated funds for, for the transport sector is being utilized. But who are benefiting from it? I, can, I, I, I think we need a breakdown of that. Um, I think lastly, I want to hear from the Truck Association. Uh, very briefly. Senator Joel, you, you yes. have your hands raised. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I, I have another uh, meeting. I would just like to uh, 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 put on record, Madam Chair, that I have studied very well in this hearing. I have tons of questions here with me. I would lovely uh, wanted to, to, to ask the uh, updates on Bayanihan uh, uh, allocation for our displaced uh, PUV drivers operators. Sana mabigyan tayo ng update kahit na submission na lang, Madam Chair. But uh, lastly, Madam Chair, that I'd like to uh, raise because I remember I was looking at my schedule and I, I, I saw the last hearing that uh, I attended in this uh, committee hearing about PUV modernization was last February 2018. This was three years ago, Madam Chair, and LTFRV, LTFRB said that there were already 3,000 operators who signified uh, to purchase uh, modern vehicles. And yet, uh, Madam Chair, the data shared by Chair uh, Delgra earlier said that um, there are only 2,929 modern OFG compliant and operational PUVs uh, as of March 2021. It did not increase at all, Madam Chair, uh, in the past years. And um, probably, I, I'm not sure about the figures, there are roughly about 200,000 uh, PUVs. But uh, clearly, Madam Chair, uh, more has to be uh, done to make the loan financing options uh, more bearable or affordable for our operators to modernize. And uh, thank you very much for calling this hearing and uh, thank you for your uh, uh, passionate care for our uh, uh, PUV sector. And uh, uh, we know that uh, we have a lot of things to do pa. Maraming salamat, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Joel, for keeping track of all that data for how many years? <laughs> Talaga nagre-review ka. Maraming salamat. Um, Pedro Dap, maikli lang po kasi kailangan ako mag-adjourn.
Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagkakaimbitan niyo po sa amin dito, Madam Chair, lalong-lalo na po sa mga kasama ko. Eh, marami na po natalakay tungkol po dito sa Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program. Ang sa amin lamang po, ang concern lamang po namin, ang sinasabi po ng ilan nating kasama, na wala daw pong uh, gastusin tungkol po dyan sa consolidation process. Meron po. Unang-una, ano po ba yung mga gastusin ng uh, pagpumasok sa consolidation process? Meron pong mga P, lalong-lalo na po lahat ng mga existing operator na nagkaroon po ng mga uh, hindi po nakolekta nila yung mga uh, ano to, annual book at uh, ITR. Yan po yung nagkakahalaga ng halos 40,000. Hindi po yan uh, sa pagkakamali. Uh, sa pagkakamali ng individual operator samantalang sila na sila naman po ay nagbabayad annually ng mga registration po nila pero ang nangyayari po pag dumulog po sila sa LTFRB wala pong record wala rin po sila na misplaced din po sa kanila yung mga record payment slip eh yun po yung sinasabing malaking pinagbabayaran pero yung mga fee lalong lalo po sa mga hearing eh, yan po talaga yung ikinukonsidera namin nagpapasakit ng ulo ng individual operator. Secondly, question lang po sa ating mahal na chairman ng LTFRB. Maraming pagkakataon na po kung dumulog sa LTFRB. Marami po kaming ruta, uh, operator at drivers na na-displace po talaga. Example na lang po, binabanggit po kanina ng ating mahal na chairman Delgra. Chairman Delgra, Ilang beses na po kung dumulog sa ating LTFRB, ipinakikiusap ko, pra, nag-start po itong uh, pandemic na to last March pa po hanggang sa kasalukuyan po. Hindi pa po sila nakakabiyahe. Ang sinasagot po sa amin ng, ano, ng uh, LTFRB, wala pa naman po daw talagang pwedeng bumiyahe. Sa area kung saan po sila, ang tinutukoy po kanina ay Munoz Monumento. Meron po naman talagang maka, nakalaang ruta na isnabit na rin po namin sa sa LTFRB nung mga panahong nabubuhay pa si Ma'am Seni Maranan. Pero hanggang sa lakasalko yan po, hindi po sila ano, eh, sana po, po konting consideration sa mga na-displaced na driver at operator. Sige, ito pong pandakan liyong ginto. 240 existing franchise meron po dito. Pero sa kasalukuyan po, ang tumatakbo po dito is 30 unit na modernized jeep. Ano pong mangyayari doon sa more than 200 unit existing franchise? Ano po bang mangyayari sa kanila? Bababaliwala na po sana sila. Ang isang kahilingan ko lamang po, kami naman po ay lagi noon sumusunod po sa mga polisiya ng ating samahan, ng ating gobyerno. Hindi po kami tumututol sa mga mabubuting ginagawa ng ating pamalaan. Lalong-lalo na po, pakikinabangan po ito ng mga next generation. Ito po yung hinaing ko. Uh, kung hindi po talaga sila mapapabiyahe, bakit hindi po? Meron naman po talagang inilaan ang ating pamahalaan na subsidy na 160,000 para po magkaroon ng win-win solution at ma-consolidate po nila ang kanilang mga dokumento. Eh bakit hindi po natin bigyan ng gobyerno sila o kaya i-wave na lang po, magkaroon po ng amnesty doon sa mga na hindi na po nakapagre-registro dahil nga po sa kakapusan ng perang kanilang uh, pinoproblemang malaki ngayon. Meron pa po akong is, ano, ito pong ano, ito pong uh, baklaran, uh, uh, Blooming Treat, kaya po, na-displace po silang lahat dyan. Existing po lahat ang sinasabi kong mga ruta na yan. Na-displace po sila dyan. Maraming beses na rin po akong umapila sa LTFA. Sana naman po, bigyan sila ng pagkakataon na makabiyahe muna para naman po makapag-ipon sila kung hindi po kaya ng magkaroon ng subsidy galing po doon sa 160 na pinapangako po ng gobyerno, sila po mismo makapag-ipon ng sapat na pera para po pagpasok nila po doon sa consolidation procedure at may mga requirements, may mga gastusin, maka-afford naman po sana sila. Meron po po kami sa Region 4, sa Region 4A, lahat po sila doon consolidated na. Pero ano pong nangyayari ngayon? Hindi ba rin po sila makabiyahe ng maayos dahil 50% lang po ang inaalaw ng ating uh, uh, gobyerno. Pero marami po pong nangungulorum doon, lalo na po kapag lumabas po yung kanilang mga bagong unit. Paano po sila kikita? Paano po sila makakapagbiyayad doon sa bangko? May sino po ba yung mabiperwisyo? Hindi po ba yung taong bayan din ang mabiperwisyo dahil ang nakalagak po sa, mga, sa government bank ay pera po, meron po tayong bawat Pilipinong ang bag doon. May mga share po tayo doon. Ang kahilingan ko lamang po. Sana po matugunan 
ng ating pamahalaan, lalo-lalo na po ng ating Chairman Delgra ang mga problema namin. Isa pa po, ito pong um, news monument, ay ito pong ano namin, mga isa na lang po na... kung pa pwede po. I hindi po, ilan lang po ang mga regional namin ito. Ito pong bagyo namin. Ito pong uh, bagyo namin, baka po pwede po i-consider natin na taroon na lang po na rehabilitation, lalo-lalo na po yung mga less than 4 kilometers na mga ruta namin na talaga naman pong hindi po talaga kakayanin magbayad ng anumang mga uh, amortization. Pag-aralan po natin mabuti, siguro po hindi naman po tayo uh, nagkakaroon ng uh, malawak ang pag-aaral dahil less than 4 kilometers lang po yan eh. Nung ako po'y namamasada sa ruta na yan, kubikita po ako dyan, sagad na sagad na po, dalawang libo. Ano po ba yung magiging obligasyon natin doon sa pagbabayad? Sana po piliin naman, ikonsidera naman lahat ng mga aspeto namin. At meron po kami dito, isa po, nag-file po kami dito. Yung grupo po namin dyan, sa, ano, sa, dito po sa uh, Novaliches, nag, nagkaroon po ng, ano, ng denied order galing po sa LTFRB dahil meron okay, na pa sir, lang. Uh, sir, ganito uh, po ha. Mm -hmm. Ang hihingin ko sa FEDJODAP, lahat ng hinanaing ninyo mm -hmm. ngayon, ilagay nyo sa isang liham. Opo. Sa liham na yan, bigyan mo kami ng kopya sa komite at ipadala ninyo kay Chairman Delgra. Ang gagawin namin para sa inyo ay masisiguro namin na ipapalo up namin sa LTFRB na bigyan kayo ng kasagutan. Kasi po ngayon, lahat yan ay binabato ninyo. Hindi po yan matatandaan lahat. No? Kailangan din namin balikan itong uh, transcript para mabigay sa kanila. Pero para mapadali, ibigay na ninyo yung liham at sisiguraduhin ko na sasagutin yan ng LTFRB. Okay? Um, uh, tama po ba ang sinabi ninyo na pagpaparehistro, magkano ang binabayan? 40,000? Uh, more or less po, yung pagpaparehistro po, hindi naman po ganong kalaki. Ang sinasabi ko po na mayroong bayarin na problema yung bawat operator kasi po may mga annual book pong pinaiiral ng mga lalo-lalo na po ng 2016 up to, the, up to 2013 to 2016. Ang uh, kinukonsider po lagi dyan ang annual book. Which is pag na mismo po yung annual book na yan, lalo-lalo na yung 2014, 2015, Uh, more or less, mga nasa 26 o hanggang 30,000 po iyan. Okay, hindi po sila makakapag-comply doon, uh, sa, uh, Madam Chair. Hindi po sila makakapag-comply doon sa, ano, sa may pera man po sila. Hindi sila makakapag-comply dahil na miss po nila. Kinakailangan bayaran po nila lahat ng mga miss payment na hindi po nila nabayaran. Pero yung sinasabi ko lang po dito, sila po ba kapag nagrehistro annually, papayag po pa ang ating pamahalaan na hindi nila makukumpleto ang bayarin bago ilabas yung mga original document para po sila makapamasada? Hindi po. Ang kinakailangan po nila, makumpleto po nila lahat ng mga bayarin nila para po makapag-comply sila at mailabas po ng LTFRB ang rehistro po nila. Yun po yung sinasabi ko, kaya lumalaki po ang mga obligasyon ng bawat isa. Kaya nga po, ang kahilingan ko, magkaroon po sana ng amnesty doon sa lahat ng mga na-displaced na mga operator, hindi po nakapag-rehistro, gawa na po nitong uh, pandemic na umiiral sa atin okay ngayon. Po. Sana po maintindihan po natin lahat Sige yan. po. Tip, pag-aralan po natin yung amnesty, hindi naman siguro naghihirap ang LTFRB. Eh, no? um, po. <laughs> so baka pwede naman tayo humingi ng konting palugit. Uh, maraming opo, salamat opo. po, Mr. Rabano. Huli na lang po, Truckers Association. Marami. Alam mo, hindi tayo matatapos eh. eh kailangan ko na pong tapusin itong hearing. So, Truckers Association, three minutes po. One minute, ibibigay ko kay Mr. Yumol kasi sentro din siya ng ating diskusyon dito. Okay, go ahead, Truckers Association. Yes po, magandang uh, hapon po, uh, Madam Chair, at uh, kay Senator Joel at kay Senator Nancy. Salamat po sa pagkakataon na kami ay uh, naanyayahan dito. Um, tungkol po doon sa ating PUDMP, kasi ang focus po lagi dito, modernization, bagong units, funding, cost of units, uh, monthly amortization against daily income. Ito po yung mga, mga malalaking concerns na bumabagabag do sa ating uh, mga drivers and operators. Kanina po ay nabanggit ni Chairman Delgra na yun naman po palang mga traditional jeepney natin na roadworthy ay pwede naman po palang maisama dito sa sa consolidation at saka dito po sa pag-avail natin. 
Ang maganda po yung report kanina bagamat yung po mga figures na nailatag kung i-compare natin doon sa actual number of units ay parang parang malaki pa po yung diferensya. Uh, gusto, gusto po sana natin itanong kung ilan ba doon sa mga reported units ng modernization program yung traditional na roadworthy jeepney ang napasok dito or ito ba ay puro brand new units. That is one po. And um, doon po sa previous meeting natin, hearing natin, Madam Chair, ay uh, nabanggit po ng, uh, ng uh, ni ASEC uh, Galvante that uh, uh, kinikilala na at implement na ngayon ng pamahalaan through DOTR, LTO, LTFRD, yung roadworthiness as the basis of road safety ng mga sasakyan at hindi na po year model phase out. Pero kanina po, si Ka Juliet ay mukhang worried at humihingi ng moratorium pang ng another two years para po doon sa year model phase out. So nakakalito po, ano ba talaga ang implementasyon ng gobyerno? Uh, roadworthiness or year model phase out? Sa parte po ng mga truck, ay uh, ganyan pa rin po yung standing na naintindihan bagamat uh, tumahimik po ang uh, LTFRB at LTO doon sa year model phase out but still yun pong 2018-007 kung hindi po ako nagkakamali ay in effect pa rin po at uh, hindi pa tinatanggal ng, ng, D, ng DOTR na yung deadline na, na ginawa nila noong August uh, 2020 until uh, 29 of December last year, ay nandun pa rin po para doon sa phase out ng mga truck. Uh, sana po, at uh, na, napapasalamat kami na yung year model phase out ay wawalain at roadworthiness at kami naman po ay nagko-comply doon bagamat wala po, uh, hindi kasama sa MBIC yung uh, mga trucks but still, sabi nga po nila, yung visual appreciation and uh, the PE thesis ay gumagana. At yun po yung sinusunod namin. Uh, sana po ang uh, DOTR to LTO ay maglabas na ng uh, panibagong department order na sinasabi nilang roadworthiness na ang gagamitin at yun pong uh, year model phase out ay tanggalin na para po hindi na po nakakalito doon sa mga trackers dahil marami na rin po yung mga trackers na hindi na pinarinyo yung kanila mga track dahil po sa sinasabi nila hindi na pwede dahil phase out na. Bumili po kami ng mga trucks 3 years ago, 5 years ago, nung bago. Dahil naglabas din po si LTFRB na hindi raw sila tatanggap ng mga surplus na units. So natakot din po yung mga truckers na hindi makapag-serve doon sa kanilang mga kliyente. So bumili po ng trucks and uh, uh, experience po. Marami na pong truck yung nasole, yung nabatak because of the quality nung mga brand new po na nabili namin. Ako po mismo personal, meron na akong 3 years old na biniling brand new. Ngayon, kailangan mag-overhaul na kasi nasira na po yung makina, kumakain na ng langis. Eh, napakamahal po nung unit. So, isa po yun sa mga concerns namin, no, na, na based on experience, ito pong mga, mga branded na surplus trucks na pumasa sa, sa inspections, sa roadworthiness inspections ng LTO ay talaga pong nagagamit namin ng matagal at matibay. Kaya isa po yun sa gusto namin ipakiusap na na through your, through your office, through your committee, Madam Chair, ay uh, tanggalin na yung year model at uh, talagang yung roadworthiness ang uh, gawin na lang po. With LTFRB po, uh, hanggang sa ngayon, kanina problema rin po yung decision or release ng mga decision for application of new franchises uh, yung, yung pong brand new unit na sinasabi ko 3 years ago, hanggang ngayon po hindi pa na-release yung aking application ng franchise. And uh, meron pong provisional authority na ini-issue ang LTFRB upon application at ito po ay nag expire every 3 months. Sa 36 months, labing dalawang beses na po ako na nagre-renew ng provisional authority. Mura Kung diretso pero may proseso po at talagang hindi naman pag in-apply nyo ngayon bukas approved na. It will take weeks bago po ma-approve. Ang isa pong problema namin, may mga local government units po ngayon na pati po yung mga provisional authority na ini-issue ni LTFRB ay pinakikialaman at hinihimay. Pag po nakita nilang expired yung aming PA, 
ini-impound po nila yung aming truck kasi daw po yun ay impoundable offense. Ini-impound po nila, particularly City of Manila, at 5,000 pesos po ang multa namin doon. Na pag nagmulta kami ng 5,000, even if hindi ma-renew yung aming PA, i-release na po kami. Pagbukas na huli-uli kami sa ganung offense, multa na naman po kami ng 5,000 pesos. Sana po, katulad nung nauna pa po naming request bago pa po i-approve itong uh, PA, uh, PA expiration, kung hindi po nila kayang magbigay ng, uh, ng uh, desisyon ng prangkisa, eh gawin na po unlimited itong PA na to. Total na sa kanila naman po yung problema, yung burden of approving it dahil hindi naman po nila tinatanggap yung aming application kung kulang. Kaya lang po nila tatanggapin pag kumpleto ito, at kung hindi po sila makadesisyon in three years time, sana po yung aming PA ay tuloy-tuloy lang na hindi na nag expire Katulad po nung ginawa ni PESA, nag-request po si PESA na lahat ng accredited tracker nila ay one year ang expiration. Bakit po kami eh, na hindi accredited ni PESA, although meron din po accredited na ilang units, bakit po yung mga trucks na hindi accredited ni PESA E eh, three, three months lang. Bakit po ang jeep ay three months lang? Bakit hindi na lang po gawin na pag dinismiss nyo yung application namin for whatever reason, eh hindi na rin po kami pwedeng tumakbo. Wala ng TA. Pero kung madidelay po, sana po, sana po, tanggalin na nila yung expiration ng, ng TA. Okay. Alam po, I, think, I think maraming salamat po. Sa lahat po ng, alam mo, uh, nakakasimpatya ko kay Chairman Delgre. Napakarami talagang concerns ngayon. Uh, naintindihan naman natin na uh, lahat tayo talaga ay may kanya-kanyang request at valid naman po yung mga request ninyo. Kaya lang syempre tao rin ng LTFRB na namumuno, uh, baka makalimutan. Uh, kung pwede, katulad dun sa truckers, lahat ng mga request ninyo. Uh, mamaya hihingin ko rin kay Mr. Yumul uh, at sa lahat din ng mga nandito Ipadala ninyo ang liham. Ganito ang gusto kong format ha. Kasi katulad ng sinabi ni Senator Nancy, naintindihan ba natin lahat to? Ako, ako aaminin ko kahit ngayon, marami pa akong dapat matutunan, 'di ba? So, pwede ba pag gumawa kayo ng liham kung saan ipapadala niyo ako ng kopya? Ganito, ilalagay niyo, Chairman Delgra, ganito ganito. I-bullet points ninyo. Huwag ninyong habaan na napakalakabang dokumento dahil marami ang kayong hinihingi. Katulad niyan, uh, number one request, uh, yung ruta po na ganito-ganyan, bakit wala pa po yung aming approval? Uh, number two, bakit po four kilometers lang, ganyan-ganyan, baka naman pwedeng habaan. Number three, huwag ninyong hahabaan ha, kasi sinasabi ko na sa inyo ngayon, tao lang ang mga nagbabasa ng mga sulat ninyo na kami ay nakakatanggap ng ilang daang pahina palagi. So kung dadalian ninyo ang format, mas maiintindihan namin kaagad at ma-checklist namin. Kaya ba ninyo gawin yan? Ha? Huwag ninyong gagawing nobela ang mga sulat ninyo. Ha? Okay, thank you po. Para okay. matulungan namin kayo, pag pinadala nyo sa amin, text ko si Chairman Delgra. Chairman Delgra, hindi pa ninyo nasasagot to ha? Yes po. Uh, yung yung tanong ni Ma'am Juliet hindi pa ninyo nasasagot uh, kasi Chairman Delgra pwede mo naman i, i delegate sa iba na sagutin uh, tapos yung sagot din niyo ibigay niyo rin po kami ng kopya na bullet points din po ha para para hindi, hindi kami mawala okay balik tayo kay, if, if kay may, Chairman uh, uh, yes sir go ahead please just a quick kana lang uh, just a quick comment on the uh, uh, on yung sa trackers po Uh, Unang-una po, actually, we're setting a coordination meeting with the truckers this week. Uh, yung invitation hindi pa po nailabas, but we already am setting a coordination meeting this week. So, yung grupo nyo po, yung inland hauler, pati na rin po yung hataw, yung may isang grupo pa, pati na rin po yung ma ma malaking uh, confederation of truckers, yung CETA po, ay invitado po rito sa meeting na ito. And in line with the guidance of... Uh, Madam Chair, if we may also request, we will extend the invitation to the office of Madam Chair so that you can also send <laughs> a staff to the coordination okay. meeting para talagang tuloy-tuloy yung, ano, yung ugnayan patungkol dito sa mga, yung mga issues that uh, the trackers have made mention. Actually, 
medyo mahaba ng konti, but I can line up two or three things. Uh, I don't want to belabor kasi it will have a lot of time here. He mentioned about roadworthiness as against vehicle age policy, mahabang usapin po yan. Issue about uh, yung uh, PA, mahabang usapin din. Tapos yung pangatlo, yung fees. No? At saka yung very important lang, if I may just make a very quick rejoinder doon sinasabi niya na pag mag apply ng prangkisa, uh, hindi daw pinapayagan na hindi bago. Uh, sinasabi po namin hindi totoo yan. So long as, dalawang bagay po, dadaan sa roadworthiness check ng LTO at pangalawa, kahit na hindi siya bago, Basta hindi lang lalagpas doon sa vehicle age policy natin ng 15 years. Ibig sabihin, but ma, ma, as I've said, Madam Chair, mahabang usapin, but we will give the details in the during the coordination meeting this week po. Uh, we would appreciate uh, if one of your staff would be there so that you would also be advised accordingly after the meeting. Ay, Thank you po. Chairman, I'm sure mag-uunahan yung staff ko mag-attend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, we will ask now... Mr. Yubol, to do up a, a, a comment. Sir, kaya na po. Opo, opo, Madam Chair, kasi po kanina yung presentation ni Chairman Degra na nakita naman natin. Ngayon, sa mga kasama natin transport group, ang ilang yung puni lang, ang apilan nila, from March hanggang ngayon, hindi nakakabiyay. Uh, siguro po hindi naman kalabisan. Sana, doon sa report na hindi ni, ni Sen. Uh, Lancy at saka ni Sen. Uh, Villanueva, Isama po lahat ng Rota Nationwide na hindi pa pinapayagan. Kasi pinag-uusapan po natin dito sa phase out. Eh wala pa nga pong phase out, phase out na na sila. Eh. Tapos yung Bayanian 2, in every modality, eh, walang phase out. Pero ano pong ginawa nyo? Eh sa loob po ng isang taon na may git. Ano po ang tawag kaya ron? Yun po yung apila namin, Madam Senator. At maraming maraming salamat po. Apat na taon na tayo nag i -re. Eh nung phase to phase pa, ala pang pandemya. Eh, nakakamatayan na po nung ibang leader namin, tatlo na po, si Pangulong Daniel Wampo, si Pangulong Nefren, tsaka si Malam Sene. Sana yung susunod, wa, wag naman sana, hindi man gagaling sanay namin, hindi naman nagdagan yung tatlong na mayapa na, eh, mas resolve na po itong posisyon na to, na kung saan. Katulad po nung inayang Senate Resolution ni Senator Ron Taveros, adjing the sense of uh, the Senate to suspend. May basya naman po. Kayo na rin po nagsasabi sa ngayon, talagang hirap na hirap po ang LTFRB. Para ngayon lang tayo nagkakaroon ng consultation kasi po, ginawa yan, walang kaukulang plano, walang kukulang plano. Saan po kami lulugar, saan kami pupunta? Yung sinasabi ni Obet Martin kanina, na walang magasyadong gastos, hindi po ito yun. Yung sinasabi niyang monthly, hindi 40,000, 27,000, eh, depende sa unit na kukunin mo. Baka mamaya, Yung unit na kukunin mo, yung binibentang kalakal ng China na na kinakalakal ng ating Pangulo, basta China may day, gustong-gustong mong tangkiligin natin, mura nga yun. Pero kung branded naman, talagang mataas, nasa 4,000. Eh kahit nung walang pandemya, hindi natin kakayaan ngayon pa kaya. Sana po, ang committee po natin, kami po, umaasa sa inyo na sana magkaroon na po ng film stand ang committee natin, maglabas tayo ng committee report. Nakita namin yung Senate Resolution 87, napakaganda. Yung interest, hindi lalampas sa 4% di minising. Yung mode of payment po, at least 15 years. Yung kanila, 7 years. Yung interest nila, 6% na napakalaki, milyon. At sinabi rin kanina, kung may pera ka, basta OFG compliant yung unit, kahit hindi ka mag-consolidate o mag-corporation, uh, pwede kang bumili. Di, gawin nyo po lang MC yun. Kasi kaysa sa magpatubo kami ng milyon-milyon, gustong gusto nyo na talaga, mahal na mahal nyo kami masyado, eh, ayaw nyo kami bigyan ng kahit konting kaalwanan. Lahat ng pag, pagpapairap, irap na nga tayo, tapos sabay-sabay na babangon, walang maiiwan. Eh, hindi lang kami naiiwan, eh, pinapatay nyo na po kami sa nangyayari na to. Isang taong may get, walang ayuda, sabi nga ng Sir Villanueva. Walang sap, lahat-lahat wala. Eh, lalakas pa po namin, ang pakiusap lang namin, bigyan nyo na kami pagkakataon na makapaganap buhay. Hindi po kami aasa sa kaunting ayuda. Hindi po kami liability ng gobyerno, asset po kami. Payagan nyo lang kami, kulungan nyo lang kami, yun lang ang pilo namin. Wala pong kontra sa amin sa pagbabago, gusto, gusto namin yan. Gusto lang po namin, Madam Sergio, sana, ito na po sana yung unat pulingirin natin, maglabas na tayo ng 
report na kung saan eh, eh talaga namang lahat tayo makikinabang dahil particular po ang mananakay. Eh, pamilya rin po namin yung mga mananakay. Gusto po namin yung programa na yun. Kaso wala po kaming kakayanan. Sana nasa nangayuda ng gobyerno. Hindi tinan nyo po yung nagsalta kanina. Isang taon na po kung hindi nakabiyan. Sabihin nyo po kung talagang wala ng pag-asa. Yung subsidy 160,000 Bigay nyo na lang sa amin. Ganun po yung sinabi ng page of kanina. Kung nat- nakukuha nyo po yung ibigay sa page, hindi nyo kami pinapabiyayin. O sabihin nyo lang, pin- pero pinabiyayin nyo yung mga modernized tip. Meron kami subsidy sa gobyerno ng 160. Ibigay nyo na lang sa amin. At least kung gusto mo magkaroon ng ibang live load, mapakikinabangan mo yung 160. Pero yun nyo po nasasabi nila yon, Kasi investment namin yan. Ang galing nyo po mag-report, i-report na, pero wala naman po kayo sa akwan, sa baba. <clears throat> hindi nyo nakikita yung tunay na programa. Ano po, yung mga nakikinabang dyan na transport leader, eh, eh may, may panahon naman lahat ng mga, eh, may ganan. Eh, sana makakatulog pa kayo ng masarap kami. Makauwi kami ng katlong daan na pag nara, nakakatulog kami ng masarap dahil galing sa pinagpaguran namin. Yung kinita namin, pinakakain namin sa pamilya namin, ano po. Yung hindi nyo pinabibigay, eh, nasa lang sila sabi nyo walang face out. Face out lang eh, saan taong lang hindi nagana po eh. Mr. Uh, Yumol, pwede, pwede po kaya, uh, syempre lahat tayo talagang emotional dito, no? pero magaganda yung mga punto ninyo. So lahat po ng mga hinihingi ninyo, isubmit po ninyo yung sulat sa amin, ha? yung ibibigay nyo kay Chairman Delgra. Kasi pag ginawa, katulad nga, nagulat nga ako kasi 6% na interest, mataas pa yan eh. Pwede pang babaan, di ba? Pag ikaw nga. O, oh, kasi kung ikaw e, meron... Ipapalo yung sobra. Eh, kung ikaw... Ibubulsan eh, subsi- yung... Teka, sandali lang po. Yung punto ko dito, no? Di ba pag kayo naglagay ng pera sa savings account nyo, magkano interest? Maswerte ka nga kung naka 1% ka, eh, di ba? Napakababa ng bigay ng banko. Pero pag maningin sila ng interest, napakataas. Eh, ang land bank at DBP, hindi naman dapat talaga kumikita yan. Huwag lang yan malulugi. So, kung meron silang interest, kahit na 4%, okay na yon Parang subsidia na yung extra 2% na matitipid ng ating mga drivers, imbis na 6% ang babayaran nila. So, isasama ko po din yan sa committee report. Ngayon, um, gusto kong tanungin si Chairman Delgra. Chair, pwede po ba magkaroon ng moratorium sa consolidation? At least one year after nagkaroon ng 100% resumption ang ating mga drivers kasi 'di ba ang dami mga rutang suspendido ngayon dahil nga dito sa pandemya baka pwede namang ipalawig muna yung consolidation is that possible sir Madam Chair Yes Hello? sir Opo Actually po Yes yung... Hello Hello Go ahead po Ayan opo uh, Madam Chair actually po yung <clears throat> yung programang ito Uh, started 2017, June to be exact. And that we have set, actually one of the components there is the, yung tinatawag natin initial implementation. So initially, they were given three years to consolidate because as we have, as we have said uh, repeatedly, consolidation is key. And then uh, umabot yung pandemia, we have extended it uh, actually twice or three times already. So uh, having said that, as we have made mention also, na yung consolidation as a deadline uh, is set on March 31, but it does not mean also na titigil yung mga hindi nag-consolidate. Uh, meron po kaming MC, na yung MC 066, if I may recall, that we have said na <clears throat> if you have not consolidated at the end of that period that we have stated there, which is uh, as of the latest, yung March 31, You continue to apply, but you're still given one year to consolidate. So, ang ibig ko lang sabihin po, uh, Madam Chair, that uh, uh, tuloy-tuloy naman din po yung program implementation nito, uh, including the appeal to consolidate. I would just like to uh, perhaps point out no, uh, na itong program na ito is inclusive. Inclusive especially those who are affected. That's precisely why hindi ito yung isa o dalawang component ang inaano natin dito, ang, uh, ang uh, ina-address. We have to look at it from all components 
in so far as what we would see would be most sensitive or affected. No? As mentioned, uh, I, I hope uh, kasi si Ka Obet gusto nang sumagot dun kay Mr. Yumol kasi nakikita ni uh, Ka Obet yung benefit, the full benefit of the monetization program. It is not to say, Madam Chair, na walang problema pagpapasok ka. May problema. But the benefits far outweigh the risk in so far as the monetization program is concerned. I has, as I have made mention, uh, to our surprise, uh, akala nga namin babagal o hihinto yung, yung pagpapatakbo ng programa I, during the time of the pandemic. Nakakatuwa na tuloy-tuloy. And obviously, we don't credit it to any one group. No, we cannot credit it to LTFRB, to DOTR. We cannot even credit it to the co-op. We cannot even credit it to the LGU who would support modernization. It's, as I've said, an all-nation approach in so far as modernization program is concerned. But we need to do this together. So hindi po pwede na iiwanan natin. Pero kung sakasakali talaga magdidesisyon sila na ayaw, eh may iiwanan sila doon sa ginagawa nating modernization program. Yun po okay, so... So, Chair Delga, just for my understanding and the understanding of our uh, participants here today, hindi ibig sabihin na hindi ka nakapag-consolidate ng end of March ay hindi ka na pwedeng mag-fly ng ruta nyo. Pero tumatakbo ang metro, kailangan mag-consolidate na rin at some point, a year after. Tama ba yun? Uh, not Tama po, essentially, Madam Chair, but not necessarily a year after. Uh, within the year. Para mas mapadali pa yung pagpasok. Within the year. Okay. So lahat yan, uh, lahat ng mga katanungan ninyo ay pakisubmit na. So at least hindi tayo nag, nag, naghihingalong nakikipaghabulan ngayon sa LTFRB kasi next next week magsa-session magsa break na kami. Uh, at, pero at least palagay ang loob ko na yung ating mga mahal na driver ay patuloy pa rin namang pwedeng uh, mag, mag sa kanilang mga ruta na pinayagan, basta lamang ay mag-usap-usap tungkol sa consolidation, consolidation within the year. Ngayon, para sa ating mga drivers, at sinabi nga ni Mr. Yumol, um, I will move to submit this committee report already. Mr. Martin, yes. Well, one minute, ma Madam Chair. Thank you po at uh, napagbigyan niyo ako. Well, Siguro na, na nakita ko ang mga problema ng mga grupo natin sa transport ay ang consolidation process. Siguro I would advise these people, these operators, these leaders, na siguro may pagkunayan sa ating mga LTFR regions dito sa NCR para malaman nila yung tamang proseso ng consolidation. At uh, regarding sa sinabi ni Danny Yumon na 40,000, ako ay wala akong chay ng tumatakbo. Ang lahat ko ng modern deep core ay puro isusumate. Local po yan ang uh, body, isusingin. At I have the records, Madam Chair, just to prove it to Mr. Yumol. I do not know kung itong si Danny Yumol ay moder meron ng modern gift. Ako ho, 60 units. I have another order of 120 units. At nakita ko po ang beneficyo nito. Kanya nga po yung mga grupo ko ay sumangayon dito sapagkat nakita nila yung kagandahan nito. Doon sa ibang grupo oh. na problema ang consideration ang may papayo ko po, Madam Chair, may pag-ugnayan sa NCR Director, kay Atty. Tamayo, Region 3, upang ibigay sa kanila ang tamang sistema ng mod, uh, consolidation process. Regarding Danny Yumon, yung sinasabi niya, wala ko, mayroon ako isang China, Madam Chair, hindi ko na pinabibiyahe. Mayroon ako ko ngayon existing units na isusu. I can show him the records na minabayaran ko, wala pang 30,000 a month ang monthly amortization. Kasi saan ka siguro, nakakuha ng... Sir, saan tayo nakakuha ng loan? BBP po. Ay, land bank po, Madam Chair. Okay, Ito ganito na lang po. I, I'm, I'm glad that you you raised that, no, Mr. Martin. Bigyan mo kami ng kopya niyan. Ngayon, yung sinasabi ninyo na kausapin yung si Attorney Tamayo, um, LTFRB, give me a step-by-step -step process on how to be able to apply for a cooperative. ba? Diba? Yeah. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Para, para mabilis kasi... Ano ba, yung, ano ba yung kailangan ng mga dokumento, ganyan? Kasi meron tayong anti-red tape act din, di ba? So yes. we want to make sure that we're compliant. But but thank you. I, I appreciate both Danny Yumol and I appreciate Mr. Martin because it presents uh, two different sides. And we need yes. to be able to see and reconcile those. I'm glad to see that you've succeeded 
in the proposed system of the LTFRB, Mr. Martin, um, eh, siguro talagang organisado ka na uh, nasanay ka sa proseso nila, pero di natin mapapagkaila, ma marami na papag-iwanan pa rin. So, uh, konting tulong. So, Sir Papano. Tama po yan, uh, Madam Chair. Sapagkat ako po kasi jeepney operator, matagal, ako po ang pinakamatagal ng jeepney leaders sa ngayon. At ako po ay jeepney operator kanya. Remember, Madam Chair, during uh, one of our meeting in the Senate, na sinabi ko sa inyo, dala ko po ang aking CPC. Affected po ako sapagkat ako ay jeepney operator. Hindi ko nga alam yung ibang leader niya kung jeepney operator at paano naging operator. Eh. At uh, yung pong one more thing, uh, Madam Chair, one minute. Yung nabangit din ni Danny Yumon tungkol dito sa programa ng TESTA, which is sponsored by DOTR, yung super scholar po yan. Eh palagay ko, baka kulang siya ng kaalaman dyan, maturoan natin yan para yung kanyang mga hanay ay makapag-enroll sa TESTA. At ito po iniingganyo tayo ng ating kalihim, Artugade, ang asawa ng super, anak ng super, kamag-anak ng super, ay mag-enroll po sa TESTA para mabigyan ng karampatang hanap buhay. Asawa, okay. kamag-anak, kapatid. Meron po, nabanggit ni Mr. Chair, meron allowance na minimum wage para yung kanilang hanap buhay ay maiwan nila at may pagkakitaan sila. Napakaganda po nitong programang Super Scholar na ito ng DOT, Madam Chair. At oh, so libre, libre, libre po yan, ano? Libre po ito. So pwede, pwede, na, pwede sila, kunyari ang gusto nila, cosmetology, pwede yon. Pwede po. Oh, Basta so within the, the test the mga project po yan, lahat po yan, pagluluto, masinist, welder, everything po talagang they will give you a certificate after your graduation. So, kung mag-a-apply ka sa abroad, mag-a-apply ka sa local, certificate ka po ng TESTA. Baka ho si okay. Dali Yumula, hindi niya alam to, eh mabuti malaman niya, pwede naman nun siya mag-inquire sa mga TESTA sa mga probinsya at matulungan ng hanay niya, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, Madam Chair uh, may I add one point uh, if, if from Move Us One po? I am sorry. Uh, you know what? I, I really have to adjourn this already. So I'm giving you 30 seconds, 30 Dr. Seconds. C. Okay, go ahead. 30 seconds. Uh, There's a mention of consolidation, uh, Madam Chair. We understand that one of the panelists here is actually from the OTC. So without having to belabor time, uh, perhaps the questions might also be directed later on, even after this hearing, to the OTC. No? The ED Eugene Pabualan is actually here in attendance. So perhaps you can direct also the question to him to assist those who wants to consolidate into cooperatives po, transport service. Anong OTC? Anong OTC? Office of Transport Cooperative. Thank you po. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. C, ikaw na yung huli. Uh, very quick, uh, Madam Chair. You know, all these programs are very important, including service contracting. Uh, one thing we see, which is a constraint, is the institutional capacity of the OTR and LTFRB. This is actually, in a way, restricting also the implementation. So I would suggest for all of us, legislators and DOTR, to address this. Uh, this is part of the constraint, why implementation has been weak. So please address this. Po. Thank you very much. I don't, wait, 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 wait. It's a little bit uh, hypothetical in my... I, what do you mean? The What's your point? The uh, Again? My, my point is, ma'am, for the magnitude of this program, uh, we need more staff involved. So regular staff of LTFRB and DOTR, there are uh, limitations in terms of how many are actually involved in, in implementing this program. And even, you know, the job order and contractual staff that are hired to implement these programs is limited. When we look at the magnitude, the number of co-ops that need to be formed, uh, you have to weigh that against how many staff are in the Office of Transport Cooperatives. I, I think Very that's really the, Yes, yeah, that, that's a good point. In fact, in many government offices, talagang kulang ng tao and uh, maraming programa ang DOTR kaya hindi natututukan uh, mabuti ang bawat isa. Madam so Chair? anyway, <coughs> Madam Chair, speak Madam Chair, quickly I can... Uh, uh, Steve Buster oh. from the Department of Transportation, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Papa, very Go ahead. Briefly, no? we, recognize po, we recognize po the points made by uh, Dr. C. Uh, in fact, po, we are uh, in close coordination with their uh, group. 
as well as to inform them that uh, we are in coordination with DPM po, no? para po ma-institutionalize din po talaga itong PMOs namin with regard to service contracting. Kasi talagang totoo naman po, kulang po kami sa tao. Ngunit pag mato ganun ang sitwasyon, we are still pushing for the program to be a successful one. And of course, we always welcome po yung mga comments na ganyan and suggestions. So, uh, yun lang po, Madam Cheng. Okay, thank you. So, uh, no more. I, I I will have to already adjourn this hearing. I would like. Who is speaking? Uh, from uh, from provincial basis uh, transport sector. What do you have to add, Madam? Uh, a little bit lang po ito. So, kami po mga provincial basis sa uh, local union press.